right, folks. So I've had word from Trustee Officer Miller that uh, we are we are now uh, ready. We are being recorded. So welcome to our uh, board meeting Join. of May 25th. I'll ask folks to mute themselves. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to begin by going through roll call to confirm uh, all of the trustees and student trustees who are in attendance. Do we have Trustee Archer? Here. Trustee Bingham? Here. Trustee Buck? Here. Trustee Dango? Present, thank you. Trustee Deek? Present, thank you. Trustee Galindo? Present, thank you. Myself is, uh, Trustee Johnstone is here. Trustee Miller? Present, thank you. Trustee Maholland. Here. Trustee Taken Miller. I'm here. Trustee Tut. Present, thank you. Student Trustee Meddy. I'm here. Student Trustee Prozek. Student Trustee Prozek. Heather, you may want to fire um, student trustee Prozik a text message as he was with us previously. Um, to that, um, uh, we have our director, Manny Figueredo, on the line as well as his entire executive council. Uh, director Figueredo, can you also confirm if we have any other um, guests on the uh, on the conference call tonight. Well, thank you through the chair. Um, Sam Hutton left. Thank you through the chair. We will have um, our review panel, Dr. Jean Clinton, Dr. Gary Warner, and Brenda Flaherty calling in. They might be online right now. In addition to um, Kojo Institute, uh, Kika Ojo Thompson, uh, Shelley Nixon, and Evelyn Myrie from her team will also be uh, on the call this evening if they, they might be already. Thank you, Director Figueredo. So with that, it is 6.07 and I'm calling the, the meeting to order. I'm going to start with the land acknowledgement. The Hamilton Wentworth District School Board acknowledges our presence on the ancestral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee Confederacy land as determined by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty. The Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt represents the treaty relationship between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Anishinaabe with respect to sharing the land and resources thereon. The intent of this agreement is for all nations sharing this territory to do so responsibly, respectfully, and sustainably in perpetuity. We respect the long-standing relationships with the local indigenous communities, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and the First Six Nations of the Grand River. Chairman Prozik, with joined. Welcome, student trustee Prozik. Uh, with that, uh, we'll now have the singing of O Canada.
thank you for uh, the singing of O Canada. We'll now move along to approval of the agenda. So we do need to amend the agenda. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading. Uh, it's actually not an amendment. It's, uh, it'll be a recess to finish our earlier meeting. Um, so we will be um, skipping over item number uh, nine and resuming um, uh, resuming that uh, later at the end of the meeting, our, our committee of the whole from earlier this evening. So with that, I am looking for approval of the agenda, um, and I will be uh, just drawing on members of our trustee roll call. Uh, so I'll begin with um, uh, Trustee Archer, seconded by Trustee uh, Bingham to approve the agenda uh, as it stands with a recess on item nine. Uh, we're turning at the end of the meeting. Uh, do we have any trustees who uh, dissent? who are voting against approval of the agenda. Hearing none, we will be moving along to declarations of conflict of interest. I did not receive any written or formal declarations earlier today. But do we have any Warner. declarations? Join. Do we have it? Welcome, Gary. If we have, do we have any declarations of conflict of interest? No, I don't. So, sorry, Gary, that was not to you. That, that was joined um, to our, our Board of Trustees. To the Board of Trustees, do we have any declarations of conflict of interest? Hearing none, moving along to confirmation of the minutes from May 11th, 2020. Um, I'll give trustees a few moments to look over the minutes. And to our guests joining us on the phone, if you could please mute yourself. And uh, trustees are working through our uh, meeting this evening, uh, and we will get to you when we come to item eight. We are currently on item five. So trustees, do we have any, um, uh, any comments with regards to confirmation of the minutes? I'll ask the general question. Hearing none, we'll move along to um, item six, reports from special com um, uh, trustee committees, and that is uh, finance and facilities. With that, I will turn to uh, trustee Danko to bring forward the report from May 14th. Thank you, and through the chair, I'm happy to bring forward the finance and facilities report from May 14th. I'll ask trustees to look to page 6-1 in their uh, package from this evening. We do have an action item. Uh, item A is our 2020-21 budget development, where we received an overview of the preliminary budget for special education, and staff also reviewed non-school-based staffing. You'll see before you that there are six reasons why staffing numbers may change, they may increase or decrease, and that includes an investment in system priority staffing once uh, collective agreements are ratified, uh, because we are expecting this support for student fund. There's also some uncertainty regarding our partnerships and priorities funding. That's our PPF funding that we often receive each year. Um, some of these grants do have positions associated with them, and we do not have that information at this time. So once we find out if PPFs are confirmed, uh, then we may have staffing positions that are added back in. The timing of school closures or openings may also impact staffing, as well as changes in class size funding, which has happened this year. Um, of course, as always, as enrollment fluctuates, we may see um, increases or decreases in staffing, but we do fortunately have pro projected increases for both our elementary and secondary panels this year, which is great news. And if there are any other budget and that, uh, adjustments, there can be some adjustments to staffing. Um, at this point, we are still waiting for the GSN from the ministry, and we are still waiting um, to find out what our what PPF funding will be allocated. Um, at the time of this meeting, as of May 14th, we were expecting the funding formula to be released by the middle of May. Um, that has not yet happened, as, at least it's not, not as of yesterday. Um, as soon as that does happen, then staff will finalize our preliminary budget position. In the meantime, 
our exec council will continue to review expenditures and make sure that recommendations come to finance and facilities as soon as possible. We do have a motion um, that is the action part of this item where we had Becky Buck recommending that a letter be written to the Minister of Education explaining the significant impacts and challenges that school boards face when funding, particularly the partnerships and priority funding, are not confirmed in a timely fashion. Trustees will be aware that over the past two years we've had some delays in receiving the GSN and PPF funding confirmations uh, in, a, in the normal time frame that we, we usually get them in the spring. That didn't happen in the past. And so we think that it's very important that the ministry is just aware of the, the impacts that has on our staff allocations, um, the, the stability of positions for staff, and for the function of our board and our, our budgeting process. We also have a monitoring item, uh, so we had a capital update, and the good news is that capital construction is back up and running for all of our capital projects that were in process. And there aren't any major delays expected, however, as a result of the pause in construction due to COVID-19 restrictions, we are reviewing the September opening date for Nora Francis Henderson Secondary School. And staff are considering all options. There are many variables that are unknown at this time that can impact purchasing, uh, construction that can impact moving, getting things into the building for a September start. So at the time of this meeting, staff had committed to sharing information with the public as soon as it was available. That has been done in the meantime. And we also had information that the RFP process has continued and a tender was awarded for Mount Albion, which is great news. Uh, we were at the time of this meeting waiting for the results of collegiate RFP process. And I believe we have a positive update on that one as well. With that, I would like to move the report. Thank you, uh, Trustee Danko. Uh, so with that, um, I'll have a seconder and uh, we will have Trustee Taken Miller second, uh, second the report. And with that, I'll go through roll call. Trustee Archer, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, Trustee Bingham. No, no questions right now. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Buck. Uh, thank you, Trustee Johnstone. I just wanted to speak a moment to the motion that I had made uh, at this meeting. Uh, I understand that in past years, this hasn't been an issue where um, uh, the ministry has been so delayed in getting um, PPFs to boards in a timely manner. Um, they do have deadlines, and this is an exceptional year, and uh, there's no part of me that wants to diminish that. However, uh, I see a pattern in just the, the few short years that I've uh, been doing this job, and so I would, um, I'd like to get ahead of this. This year, yes, an exceptional year. Uh, I would hate to see it happen again where we're, uh, to the end of May, and we still don't have confirmation on a number of items from the ministry. So uh, just a note to them uh, was my purpose in uh, putting forward the motion that we really do need uh, timely responses from them. Or, um, sorry, we do need uh, timely information from them. Our staff have deadlines, and they're doing their best to meet them, but it does impact certain things like... Um, union agreements and uh, when we don't know um, when we don't know what our funding is going to be then that means that uh, some positions end up being called redundant and staff lose their jobs and it's avoidable in a lot in in this case and uh, I would say even in last year's case to a degree so I just uh, that's all I'll say on that but um, yeah thank you uh, for putting this Motion on the floor. Thank you, Trustee Buck. Um, uh, so uh, I'll turn to staff for comment. Uh, Director Figueredo. Um, thank you through the chair. I, I only comment I have up, updated right now is that, that we're still waiting as Associate Director Zucker said, the GSN. 
Uh, we still haven't uh, received them, and we have, as, as Rector indicated, that um, the delay does cause delay in us um, approving our budgets at the local level. So we're hoping uh, to hear, we were told last Thursday that the information will be coming very, very soon is what we were told. Thank you. Um, so moving along through the speakers list, Trustee Deese. No questions, thank you. Trustee Danko. Oh, thank you, through the chair. Just uh, thank you to Trustee Buck for clarifying that we do want to recognize the exceptional circumstances we're in this year um, and that there is a, a pattern that we want to address with that motion. I also neglected to mention, I, I want to acknowledge the, the work of staff and the work of trustees on this committee. As you may have noticed, we do report to pretty much every board and this is a time of the year where we have weekly meetings and there is a lot of work to be done. So I just want to acknowledge that everyone has been very dedicated. We have had uh, all members at each meeting and I really appreciate the work of both staff and trustees. Thank you, Trustee Danko. Um, Trustee Galindo. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to echo the comments made by Trustee Buck and Trustee Danko. I'm very appreciative of staff and the work that they've done to honor 2020-2021 budget development process. I'm very happy with the updates regarding specifically the Mount Albion uh, approval to proceed and tendering completion process. I believe construction will be starting uh, on June 1st was the last I had heard over at Mount Albion, so I'm happy about that. I do also want to clarify that I also supported uh, Trustee Buck's motion at Finance and Facilities uh, to submit that letter to the Ministry uh, just to provide an update on some of the challenges that we experienced through the development process of our budget, and I think um, that input would be greatly appreciated by the Ministry. That is all. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Miller. Hi, thank you. Um, I will also express uh, my support for this motion. I think we do, as a board, have um, both the right and the, frankly, the important work to address uh, this pattern with the ministry. Um, understanding, of course, COVID-19 has made this uh, year very, very difficult. Um, so I can appreciate that, but I think that Trustee Buck is um, absolutely accurate in in saying that, you know, in, in the last two years, we've seen a pattern of um, a lack of information, a lack of preparedness or apparent preparedness uh, to share with, with boards across the province, um, you know, just really basic facts, really basic expectations. Um, I'm very stunned that we still do not have any of these numbers um, beyond even the GSN. I believe that our uh, finance and facilities staff is also waiting on um, to hear about approval for capital projects uh, that were submitted in September. So um, it's not only one area, it seems to be across the board with the way that this ministry is approaching their relationships to our school boards. Um, I find it very concerning. For lack of a better word, I, I find it quite disrespectful. Um, and it, it is impeding the ability of our fantastic staff to, to continue to do their work to uh, the furthest possible ability. Um, and, and frankly, even within the context of a, a COVID uh, situation, we see that same pattern. We see very little information being presented to us as board so that we can do the best that uh, we, our staff are capable of. Um, and I, I find it immensely troubling and very, very, the only word I can land on is, is actually just quite disrespectful because I, I find it very short-sighted in, in that. Um, I won't keep going on, but I support addressing this very factually and just very, you know, kind of to the point in, in a public letter to the ministry as it stands. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Maria Felix um, Miller. Left. <laughs> Someone pressed uh, hang up rather than mute. Um, uh, Trustee Maholland, do you have any comments or questions? No questions and no comments. Thank you. Trustee Pagan Miller. 
Yes, I support the motion that Becky's putting forward. I think it's time that, uh, you know, I know the COVID situation has made everything a little crazy this year, a little, a lot crazy. But I still think that we need to have a direction, and we're not getting any real direction on this. So I'm supportive of Becky's motion, and that's my comment. Joined. Thank you. Um, Trustee Tutt. I echo uh, Trustee Mulholland's comments. Thank you. Uh, Student Trustee Meddy. No questions right now, thank you. Student Trustee Prozik. Student Trustee Prozik. Okay, and I'll just note that uh, uh, Trustee Miller has returned onto the call. I heard her enter. Um, so I'll just I'll just echo that um, uh, we've certainly heard uh, many comments tonight with regards to uh, Trustee Buck's motion. Um, those certainly would are captured um, by our, our Trustee Officer Miller, and uh, we look forward to communicating our concerns to the Ministry. Uh, so with that, um, we have a motion to um, a motion to approve, uh, and the motion will be put forward by Trustee Danko, seconded by Trustee Buck, um, and we will be having a negative vote. Do we have anyone voting against the motion to approve? Hearing none, uh, the, the report passes. So we will now move along to item number, uh, oh, sorry, just uh, item number seven, Special Education Advisory Committee from April 22nd. And I wonder if we can ask, um, can we ask Trustee Buck to bring forward the, the report? Uh, I realize that. Uh, Trustee Buck was not in attendance. No, she was. Oh, I was actually there, Alex. Yes. Okay. Yes. Trustee um, Buck. So, no problem. I don't mind bringing this report forward. I know that uh, Tr Trustee Johnstone um, was able to come partway through, and she gave a fantastic update uh, to our group about uh, what our board is doing in other areas. Um, prior to her arrival. Uh, Superintendent of Specialized Services, Peggy Blair, gave us an update, um, gave the committee an update on the supports for families and uh, the professional learning opportunities provided to staff uh, during this, this uh, ministerial order that has our schools closed. Um, uh, we also did several members' updates and uh, and. Uh, uh, Superintendent Blair mentioned that Denise Dawson, Senior Manager of Business Services, will be coming to an upcoming SEAC meeting to provide a budget update. Hopefully we will have lots of new information uh, once um, she's able to join us. Uh, yeah, if you have any specific questions about um, uh, the supports for families, I, I would maybe ask that uh, Superintendent Blair, uh, those, those be carried off to her, but other than that, I would move the report. Thank you, Trustee Buck. Um, so with that, I'll go through, I'll have the, the report um, moved by, uh, to receive the report, moved by Trustee Buck, seconded by Trustee um, Archer, and with that, I'll go through the roll call. Uh, Trustee Archer, do you have any questions or comments? Pass, thank you. Thank you. Trustee Bingham. No, I'm good, thank you. Trustee Buck. No questions. Trustee Danko. No questions, thank you. Trustee Galindo. No questions at this time, thank you. Trustee Miller. No questions, thank you. Trustee Maholland. No questions. Trustee Pagan Miller. No questions, thank you. 
Trustee Tutt. Trustee Tutt? No questions, no questions, thanks. Uh, student Trustee Meddy? No questions, thank you. Uh, student Trustee Prozik? Uh, he's still not on the line. Uh, Trustee D. Hi. Um, I just um, wanted to thank uh, Peggy and her team um, for, you know, I, I think with everybody uh, and, you know, as we've been mentioning, but, um, you know, with all the changes that have gone on, and I just want to recognize uh, Peggy Blair and her team for all the work that they're doing uh, to support our families in this time. So thank you. Well said, Trustee D. Thank you. Um, so with that, do we have any trustees? Cause we'll, we'll now do a negative vote. Um, so the motion is to receive the report. Do we have any trustees who are dissenting? And I will... Hearing none, uh, the motion does pass. Um, so with that, we'll move on to item number eight, bullying prevention and intervention review panel interim report. And I'll turn this over to Director Figueredo. Uh, thank you through the chair. Um, this evening, I just want to acknowledge and uh, ha I'll have them say hello because I know they're on the call. Um, and after I do that, I will, there's two parts for this evening. One is to give an update on uh, a timeline and, for, uh, and I have a brief report for that. And the second part will then be to commit to our time commitment by May to give a interim report uh, from the sessions that were completed to date. Uh, and that interim report will be, will be presented uh, by Dr. Jean Clinton on behalf of the panel and the consulting firm. So I just wanna begin and let each person sort of uh, welcome them this evening. So I know Dr. Jean Clinton. You are there. Dr. Jean Clinton, are you on the line? Oh, you might be on mute. I hope not. Okay. Uh, we'll just continue to move along, uh, please, Director. Uh, Dr. Gary Warner? Yes, present. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Brenda Flaherty? Good evening, and it's uh, nice to be here to be at the point of the interim recommendations. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, Brandon. Interim that's... themes, not recommendations. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, so that's the review panel. Also, we invited um, our consulting firm and, and staff and consulting firm. We'll just see if Kika Ojo Thompson's listening as well. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, we're really excited about uh, your feedback for tonight. Uh, welcome, Kika. And... Uh, uh, one of the, and from Kika's team, um, one of the writers to help put the report together, uh, she, Shelley Nixon. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Shelley Nixon. Very nice to meet you and I'm very much looking forward to hearing everyone's feedback tonight. Um, welcome. And also I believe Evelyn Myrie is on as well. If you are, you, she might not have called in yet, but I know she was invited, so anyway. Um, thank you to all of you who have uh, joined, and I hope um, we can get Dr. Jean Clinton on after I present briefly an updated timeline report, because I know Dr. Jean is, will be the one um, presenting uh, the report to trustees. So I'm sure the other review panel members will be checking with her, or Leslie, who might be online as well, might be reaching out to her to see if she's connected. Um, so trustees, in your package this evening on page just eight dash one. Uh, what I have in front of you is the left. What I have in front of you is the motion uh, from December 16, 2019, that Trustee Danko, second by Trustee uh, Buck, which was an extension that the final report at that time was going to come May 31st, and it was changed to September 30th. What I'm asking uh, for trustees this evening is that a that that uh, previous motion be reconsidered. And if it is reconsidered, so we have to vote on that first, then the new motion around a timeline 
of December 16, 2020 for the final report to come forward. And again, um, one of the reasons why, I guess, the background of this... Jim joined. We're reminded again of the tragic event of the death of Devin Selby on October 7th and how uh, that tragic event um, did raise the broader issue of the bullying in our community and our schools, which hence uh, prompted the review panel to do their work and supported by um, uh, Ojo Institute. Uh, to date, you look in the background session, there was 20 uh, identified stakeholder groups. We still have um, outstanding the racialized community group that was scheduled March 24th and also another general session that was scheduled in Waterdown Flamborough on March 25th. In addition, there were panel-only sessions involving students, staff, um, union leaders, our principals association, and our community advisory committee chairs that have to, to be completed. So this is important work in, in discussions with uh, uh, Kojo Institute and the review panel. Everyone's committed, and we are committed to complete this by December 16th, regardless if we're allowed to have large group gatherings or not, we will have to use the virtual tools that are available to us to complete this work. So that's the first part of this evening, so I pass back to the chair, whether there be a uh, reconsidering of the first motion, and if so, uh, a recommendation to adjust the timeline to December 16th, 2020. So I'll pass back to the chair. Thank you. Um, and. Uh, I guess before we go into, sorry, um, if I can just get clarification uh, through to our director, are you, because I do believe I heard Dr. Jean Clinton come on the line. Uh, Dr. Clinton, are you with us now? I am. I've been here for some time. I don't know why I was still on mute. So can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Thank you. So with that, um, Director Figueroa, would you like um, for Jean to go, Dr. Clinton to go through the presentation and then do the, um, the motion at the end? Or would you, uh, or, or was there a preferred, I guess, presentation? Um, through the chair, what, um, thank you for asking. What I was hoping that this motion could be considered now um, and then a new motion passed, and then I would pass it on to Dr. Jean Clinton on behalf of the panel consulting firm to do the presentation and then answer any questions. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so to trustees, so at this point, um, what we are going to do is look at item 8.1, and uh, as was highlighted by Director Figueredo, um, there is an action item that uh, is presented, and the recommended action is that the final report from the well, Bullying Prevention and Intervention Review Panel be submitted to the Director of Education and shared with the Board of Trustees no later than December 16th, 2020. Um, and, um, and that the previous motion, Resolution 19 dash uh, six five uh, be rescinded and the previous uh, motion had the deadline for September 30th 2020 um, so uh, so the uh, there's two parts to the motion a and B and so with that I'll have the motion um, put forward by trustee Tut seconded by trustee Bingham so with that, uh, speaking only to um, the recommended action, I will now put it on the floor and I will go through roll call. Trustee Archer, um, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, a little confused here. The report needs to be brought to the trustees before September the 30th of 2020 or December. 2020. So there was Sorry, no Alex. motion. Oh, yes. Sorry, uh, through the trustee, chair. Trustee, um, trustee Officer Miller. Thank you. Through the chair. I just, to be clear, it's a two-part motion. So the first part that, that trustees would be voting on would be whether or not to reconsider resolution number 19-165. If that passes, then there's a second motion that comes forward, which is the new one written as Part B. 
So if it's Trusty Tut and, Crest, and Trusty Bingham who have moved and seconded the reconsideration motion that should be on the floor at the moment. Thank you uh, for that clarification. Um, so I think to make this easier, um, I'm going to go through roll call twice then on this. So right now we are only speaking to item A, which is to rescind the original date on uh, due date for the final report to come forward September 30th. Uh, what you're hearing is that staff are asking for more time uh, due to the, the unique circumstances that we are in. So uh, with that, Trustee Archer um, speaking to item A to rescind um, the September 30th deadline. Okay, so the ex there is an extension. So this means it goes, it will be reviewed, looked at um, after September. Maria Felix Miller. Left. Oh. Okay, go ahead. I I'm I'm sorry. Um, uh, so, Chucky Archer, would it help if we come back to you? Do you need more time? Sure, go ahead. Okay. It's just so interrupt. I wonder, I wonder if, um, does it help, um, uh, Director Figueredo, uh, if you could explain um, the request to all of our trustees that you're asking for? Maria Felix Miller? Joined. Um, thank you, through the chair. Um, so the first part in A, if you reconsider the original motion is was September 30th because of COVID. Um, and school closures and the sessions that were scheduled in March uh, that were outstanding. We didn't know how long the closure was going to be, so we're requesting more time and to plan the rest of the sessions in the fall, uh, whether they be you know, face to face or virtual, they will be rescheduled. So what I've asked is because there's a motion on the book, part A is first for trustees to rescind or reconsider the original motion September 30th to a vote to remove that. And then the second part B is, is then to pass a motion to support the new date, which is December 16th, 2020. I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, and so with that, just to be clear, um, because we already have a motion on the books, we're dividing this up into two parts. So currently, um, as we pass back previously in the spring, we previously passed to have our um, have this report come forward to us in September. Staff are saying that they need more time, and so therefore uh, uh, they're asking us to rescind the extension to the 30th, Part A, and then in Part B will be to extend it to December 16th, 2020. Um, so with that, I think what I'm going to do is uh, start at the bottom of the roll call and work my way up. So to item A, uh, Trustee Tut, do you have any comments? No com. I mean, no questions. The only statements that I have is the reason why I'm putting this forward is for the simple fact that given the unique situation that we're all aware of, and the fact that uh, we've committed to making sure to our various com school communities that uh, you know we want to put we want to look at every aspect leave no stone unturned and make sure that we can really tackle uh, this issue of bullying and making sure that the professionals that are involved that we make sure that we provide them with every opportunity and tool to make sure that a thorough and comprehensive report is complete that's really the rationale for why putting i put this motion forward i'm hoping that all the other trustees will consider supporting it outright. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Tut. Uh, Trustee Paken Miller. I, I'm totally in favor of it. It's fine with me if we move it to December because of the circumstances we're in. Thank you. Um, Trustee Maholland. Oh, course. Um, Okay, Trustee Miller. Hi. Um, 
So I can appreciate um, Trustee Tut's assessment here. Um, he's definitely right in that we should be looking to the professionals to do the work. Um, this is an incredibly important and very large uh, scoped project. Um, I am curious, and I was wondering if I could get clarification, and I apologize, my, I did disconnect again for the second time tonight. So I'm, I apologize if this ha has been asked and I just didn't hear it. Um, but could I get a, a clarification around why December 16th is the new date? Um, I was reviewing yeah. the report. I was reviewing the report. Um, there is a lot of very important um, work that has already come forward that's already pretty clear to me that I would I would really want to see implemented in a September, early fall rollout in terms of our curriculum and our professional development. Um, so if I could just get uh, staff to clarify what the reasoning is behind the December date. Yes, and, we'll, and I'll turn over to Director Figueredo, but just before I do, um, trustees will recall that all along we have been not waiting until the final report. All along we have been implementing changes as they have um, arrived. Uh, so I want to ensure that uh, no one thinks that we are uh, in any way delaying any of the important information that has been coming forward. Uh, and there's certainly been a number of communications that went out to our families to indicate um, how we were making changes immediately as, as feedback was coming in. Uh, but Director Figueredo. Uh, thank you through the chair and thank you, Clear Trustee Felix Miller's question. It's uh, twofold. One is to honor the scope of the work that we had committed to. And as you can see in the report, there's still uh, sessions that have not been completed that we think are important, in, uh, including part of that scope is also working with Dr. Tracy Valancourt and Dr. Uh, Deb Pepler around the online survey portion that is also available. Um, and that, and B is looking at COVID-19 and unsure of what September will look like. We know in a regular September startup that that month of September is not an ideal situation to um, have community sessions or um, administer an online survey for the community. Um, so we usually do those sessions in October and not knowing what September will look like at this point, that's why we're asking for the extension. So Joined. Thank you, Director. Um, uh, Trustee Miller, do you have follow-up questions on that? Um, sort of. It, it, I can definitely appreciate we don't know where we will be in September, um, considering the overarching issue of uh, COVID-19. I just, when I'm reading the preliminary uh, suggestions from the report, um, I'm seeing a lot of recommendations around independent um, evaluation, social justice training, restorative just justice training for our, t our staff, um, building stronger reporting, um, figuring out how to support our, our staff in reporting instances of bullying, but also connecting that to the student component. Um, there was a comment in there about building better relationships with our marginalized communities and our um, racialized and marginalized uh, commun community partners. And I'm, I'm very supportive of this work overall, but I'm very concerned that given another pushback, I'm wondering what is being done in the meantime to build these ties and support the recommendations that are coming to us that we already see in the interim report, um, and I'm sure will will become come with, come to come back to us in the final report as well. So um, I don't know if there's an answer for that today, uh, I think but we I do. do welcome. I'm, hear, I'm hearing we do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I would love to I would love to hear it. Thank you. Great and great questions, uh, Director Figueredo. You have a response. So um, thank you to the chair. So thank you, Trustee uh, Felix Miller. I think it's important. Um, there's some good questions that will come when, when the panel presents the report. 
I think it's two things to remember there. Outside of this report, we still have obligations about our safe schools and our equity action plan that we're committed to. And secondly, I think it's important when you do hear the report to date, it's themes that have emerged and what uh, the review panel will explain this and their commitment is they still want to gather the rest of the themes from groups they haven't heard. And also, they're clear that this is themes today because they want to make sure um, the commitment was to report back to the community in May in terms of themes that they've heard. But they also want to make sure then that it is filtered through the advisors, uh, the expert uh, group, uh, Dr. Kathy Short, um, Tracy Valancourt, Deb Pepler, and Barry Finley to make sure that what they put forward uh, as recommendations is actually evidence-based best practice. So that's why they want to make sure that that time of analysis and review uh, is given time. But I think it's important that we remember some of these themes will allow us as, um, as staff to reflect and see how they're already embedded or if they're not embedded, what we think about them in our terms of our safe school strategies and also our equity action plan. Uh, Trustee Miller, follow up? Okay, th no, thank you. I appreciate that response from the director. Thank you. Trustee Galindo? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just want to echo some of the comments made by Trustee Tut and Trustee Miller. Uh, in recognition of the importance of this report and the recommendations that will come forward uh, when it's concluded, in recognition of the challenging work that, is, that has been undertaken and is being undertaken with this report, and recognizing the unprecedented times and unpredictable challenges that have arisen due to COVID-19, I absolutely report, uh, support the motion to extend. Uh, when that report, the final report, will come to trustees. I think, you know, recognizing the amount of work that's going into this from an analytical and data collection standpoint, it does take time to process and analyze all that information. And what I would want is that the highest quality report come forward uh, as possible. Now, I would imagine that a value and benefit of the interim report that we're seeing right now or that will be presented is uh, the benefit of allowing staff uh, I guess a sneak peek at what's to come down the road, not the final report, but it allows us to prepare and think about some of the themes and challenges that we're going to have to address in the next couple of months, if not years. So it does allow us to plan ahead by having this interim report, and I'm happy to see that it's coming forward. Um, and with the, the additional months that uh, the review panel and the advisory uh, folks and, and, our, and our friends at the Kojo Institute, with the additional time that they'll have for the final report, it will also be interesting to look at this from a post-COVID-19 lens uh, because I, and I will you know, ask this question later once the report is being presented, but it will be interesting to see what impacts COVID-19 has had, not just from a data collection standpoint, but also from a bullying standpoint. What are some of the themes that have uh, arisen as a result of COVID-19? And when I think back to events that have changed the modern world, I think back to 9-11, for example, the September 11th terrorist attacks, we saw uh, a change in the type of bullying behavior that students and even adults were experiencing around the world. Uh, and we ended up seeing a lot of themes around, um, you know, we ended up seeing a lot of themes around racism, discrimination towards uh, folks of Muslim uh, backgrounds. And I'm curious to know if, if we're seeing any of those patterns with COVID-19. Uh, but like I said, I, I assume that uh, that's one of the opportunities that the panel will have with the added time that they're receiving to uh, prepare the final report. Uh, aside from that, no other questions or concerns. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Trustee Galindo. And I think um, while we will have a more fulsome report coming to us, Director Figueroa, uh, if you can just quickly address if um, having more time will allow us to look at potentially, um, I guess, uh, the impact of bullying may have on the post-COVID world, if any, if there's any changes in terms of what we were already looking at. Well, thank you for the chair. I think that will be the value of the consultations that will happen in the fall face-to-face -face, and also the survey. Uh, because people will bring now that lived experience. So I think we uh, not only might see some similar themes from the consultations that happened before March break, 
there might be new themes that emerge as a result of the COVID-19 reality and new things that we're just not aware of that could emerge. But we are, uh, but as you're aware, this report is being shared with staff to think about what future planning and where integration could occur until the final report comes. Thank you. Trustee Deese. Um, I support the motion. Left. I support the motion. It makes sense. I think as you know, it's important that we do this right and have the time to do it right. And I think the extra time, if it does allow us to kind of view the, the impact COVID has had as well, and, and um, even looking at the numbers um, on social media bullying, bullying. So I support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Deeds. Uh, Trustee Dango. I'd like to just echo Trustee Tut's uh, comments and to the motion for reconsideration. I absolutely support it. Uh, moving along to Trustee Buck. Uh, thank you, Trustee Johnstone. So um, I have nothing new to add uh, for the same reasons as uh, many of my colleagues have stated. I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Trustee Bingham. Uh, yes, I'll definitely be supporting this. Um, I think one of the main concerns about not uh, extending it would be that there are groups um, and areas that have not had their say yet, uh, not been able to tell us what it's like. And somewhere like Waterdown is completely different from Stony Creek, from down the mountain, from up the mountain, all of those things. And I think it's extremely important that all groups are, um, all districts, all areas, all whoever do have their say, uh, do let us know what is going on in their districts as well. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bingham. Um, Trustee Archer, and we're so sorry for the uh, interruptions earlier, and I also personally apologize that it was a bit confusing. We're all getting used to the, the new world. Uh, so with that, Trustee Archer, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I do have a comment. I did understand uh, what is being put forth, and I, I will support the motion. My concern, and I just want to make sure that it's not lost. Um, people were waiting to see the report, and from September to December, I just hope there's some resources and things available for students and staff in the new upcoming uh, school year. That's all my concern was, is if we're changing it from September to December, what re, what what's available? What what supports are available? That was my concern. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'll just um, uh, I will go over to uh, Director Figueredo. Can you provide some comments around support? Um, yes. Uh, so through the chair. Um, Again, as we go through this budget process this year, um, and you'll see as we look at provincially bargained pupil support funds that have come forward, the focus of that, as uh, you will see through what provincially bargained, is around supporting students with uh, mental health and specific um, populations who might need extra support. In addition, we're working with School Mental Health Ontario as well to ensure the funding that we were piloting, funded by School Mental Health uh, through Kathy Short, around the uh, additional lead for safe schools and social work support for, for safe schools to develop some protocols. Uh, we have final approval of that, but early indication is that the, that the School Mental Health Ontario funds will continue to flow for one more year for those key positions um, for us to support them. Trustee Archer, do you have any further uh, comments or questions uh, on that? No, I don't. Thank you. Uh, great. So I, I just have uh, comments for trustees. So I will be uh, supporting this motion tonight. Uh, this is such important work and echoing the comments of um, all the trustees before me. It's so important that we, we do it right and that we ensure that we uh, stay steadfast to our commitment to uh, connecting with all the groups that we said we would. Um, I think that um, 
we've had enormous community engagement to date, and this topic, and specifically our work, impacts all Hamiltonians, uh, and it certainly also impacts all of Greater Ontario. We have school boards across the province and and beyond uh, watching uh, to see what uh, what HWDSB is coming out with uh, with regards to uh, our learning. Um, and all of the steps that we have been taking along the way, as well as the steps and commitments that we will be taking once we receive our final report. And, um, oh, someone is finding me on mute. Can folks hear me? Yes. Heather? Yes? Okay. So uh, to the trustee that texted me, um, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> You may have to hang up and dial back in. Um, but to that, um, uh, so this, I, I'll just conclude by stating that this is such important work, and, uh, and I do agree that we take the appropriate amount of time to do it right. So with that, I am going to do a roll call on this item. Uh, oh, sorry. Did I cover? I still needed to cover our student trustees. Uh, student trustee Medi, did you have any comments or questions? No comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have um, student trustee Prozic with us on the line now? Yep, I'm here. Sorry about that. Wonderful. Do you have any uh, comments or questions? No, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that, um, and I'll just remind folks, if you're not on mute, to make sure you're muted when you're not talking. Um, so with that, I'm going to go through a negative roll call on the motion uh, uh, for item A, which is to rescind the previous motions. We're going to have two votes. So this is item A. Trustee Archer, um, sorry, I'm just going to do the, the, the um, uh, I guess, the full call. Um, do we have anyone voting against item A? Hearing none, item A passes and we'll now move on to item B. And for simplicity reasons, we'll continue to have it moved by uh, Trustee Tut and seconded by Trustee Galindo. Um, so item um, B is that if passed, the um, um, if passed for rescinded, uh, that the following motion be approved, that the final report for the Bullying Prevention and Intervention Review Panel be submitted to the Director of Education and shared with the Board of Trustees no later than December 16, 2020. Uh, so do I have any trustees voting against at this point? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you, trustees. And I will now turn this over, back over to um, Director Figueredo for item 8.2 uh, with the Safe Schools Bullying Prevention and Intervention Review Panel Interim Report. Thank you. So thank you through the chair. The trustees can see in their package on page 8-2, uh, in your package is the slide deck presentation. So without further ado, I will ask uh, Dr. Jean Clinton to, uh, on behalf of the group, present the report to trustees. And at that point, the discussion trustees the review panel for helping for our staff to be here to answer any questions. So I will pass it over to Dr. Jean Clinton. Thank you. Very good. Um, uh, thank you, Director. And uh, through the chair, uh, 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 thank you very much to the board for your a steadfast commitment and um, uh, and your support to our work to date. Um, I'll be presenting over the next uh, 15 minutes the, uh, the the slide deck that you have before you and that is available uh, uh, forthcoming. Um, want to say a very um, a, a very profound thank you to the expertise of the uh, uh, Cultural Institute for the tremendous work that they've done um, and the uh, the the. The work that we as a, a panel are undertaking could, would not be possible without their uh, a tremendous, um, a tremendous expertise. So we'll go through the background, some of the deliverables, definitions, as well as what we've done to date, uh, review some of the summaries and talk about the next steps. So as, um, as Director Figueredo has said, 
uh, this um, uh, review has been precipitated after the tragic death of Devon uh, Bracky Selvey on Monday, October 7, 2019. And um, it is uh, infusing all of our work and all of our country. We've had the privilege of having uh, Devon's mum present at three to four um, um, of the sessions as a as a participant, and we are always telling her that we keep the memory of her son in mind in all that we do. Um, it, what is in scope for us as a panel is to coordinate, facilitate, and gather input and feedback from stakeholders about the broader concern. Uh, we're uh, looking at the four pillars of prevention, intervention, reporting, and responding as defined. And we will, the review panel has the ultimate uh, responsibility of reporting back to you as a board. Join. We, we will be including not only the uh, community consultation, which we're going to give you a review of themes today, um, uh, but also uh, information that comes from our expert panel, as well as our, uh, the surveys that will be done. Uh, as you can see, there are things that are out of scope, which is investigating specifics around the incident. Um, so as you know, the personnel include, um, uh, will they include uh, myself, uh, Brenda Flaherty, and uh, Dr. Gary Warner. We have uh, tremendous expertise available, accessible to us, with uh, Barry Finley, Dr. Deb Pepler, Dr. Kathy Shorten, uh, Dr. Tracy Viancourt, who we already have contact with, and we'll um, uh, continue to, uh, to rely on their expertise. And the uh, project management we have of Kika, Audra Thompson, and Evelyn Meary, here in, uh, uh, who is here in Hamilton. So uh, as of this point in time, our project plan is complete in terms of deliverables. Our interim report will be complete as of your approval of it. Um, our consultation with stakeholders is in progress as our surveys in progress in terms of development but not distribution. Uh, and our final report is... Um, uh, is already uh, in uh, uh, formatted in, in, in mind, but the details will be filled in. So you have before you what the bullying definition um, is. Uh, it's aggressive, uh, typically repeated behavior. Uh, it involves uh, uh, the bully knowing that the behavior would likely have the effect of causing harm, social academic harm. Uh, it occurs in the context of a power imbalance. Uh, which can be size, age, intelligence, peer group. Um, it exists, which I think is very important for us to underscore, uh, both at the personal as well as at the systemic level. And it differs from conflict, uh, whereas conflict is a disagreement for both sides express their views. Uh, bullying is negative behavior for someone uses that power and aggression to control and hurt others. And we wanted to underscore that while students are the focus of this review, we recognize they are not the only individuals using or impacted by bullying in the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. So when you look at the next slide, um, uh, shows what the different forms of bullying are. And this is, uh, this is Ed from the evidence, what's in the, um, what's in the literature, bullying types, and we will be exploring and hearing about uh, physical, verbal, social, which is relational, electronic or cyber, uh, related to disability, related to sexual or sexual orientation, racial, as well as religious. So all forms of bullying will be uh, part, of our, uh, part of our work. So we, we wanted to be able to get a sense, a picture of how prevalent um, is the issue at this point in time. Uh, keeping in mind the excellent point that was made earlier about will, will, through our ongoing work from here on, be able to see if there's been any increase or decrease in bullying with our COVID-19 situation. But as you can see here, 58% um, uh, of uh, students are victims of bullying, whereas 30% of students report that they bully others. What's most important for the work that we see moving forward is the fact that peers are present and 90% of bullying incidents. It's why the, the move of the board to look at an equity action plan and safe school strategy as major drivers um, uh, for, um, uh, for looking at this issue is so important. 
And it's not an issue just for children. And more than 55% of Canadians report that they have been bullied or no co-workers who have experienced bullying on the job. We wanted to also share with you some statistics from the Hamilton board itself. Uh, and what you see here is um, uh, the number of children, first in grade four to six, uh, who have experienced bullying once or a few times during the school year. You see that 33% have been physically bullied, 13% uh, have been uh, cyber bullied. Once uh, ver verbal bullying has happened with 34% of kids and social bullying once or a few times is 32%. When you look at this as a population health issue, you begin to see that when we're talking about numbers of 33, 34%, that this is a significant impact on the development of kids. When you look at kids in grade seven and grade eight, you see that the numbers overall seem to be uh, seem to be less in some of the domains. That there's less cyber bullying once or a few times at 15%. Physical bullying is close at 25% to the 34% previously. Social bullying is still a large concern at 30% when we're talking about once or a few times and 32% um, of verbal bullying. The next slide is looking at bullying in, um, um, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the board. And overall, the number of students who report being bullied, harassed, or victimized is about 27%. Those who have bullied others is about the same percentage. But what's interesting is a very important data, and that is the 48% who are both reporting that they are victimized as well as perpetrators of, of bullying. So the next slide uh, just in, indicates um, overall uh, statistics uh, when asked if you have been bullied or harassed in the past year, which forms have you experienced? So the denominator for this is the number of kids who are reporting, I have been bullied, and then the breakdown of what kind of bullying did you experience? So we see by far that the verbal, uh, the verbal bullying is the highest percentage. So there are the statistics. What have we, um, what have we learned to date? Um, and what we've done so far is had a, a, a process of facilitated discussions with a number of, uh, of community groups between February and April, put, or not quite April, put on hold because of COVID-19. And we had committed to doing a minimum of 20 consultations and community engagement. The following slide indicates who so far has been contacted. And I think the important number here is that um, over 900, at least 900 community members have, communi have attended the community consults thus far, uh, consultations thus far. Um, and they include uh, uh, some, uh, 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 some uh, specific community members um, uh, with the, such as the uh, student, um, uh, the student senate, uh, students with neurodiverse abilities, um, as well as the Muslim um, uh, community. There are still those that need to be done, as pointed out by one of the trustees. Um, the, the experience, the lived experience in different parts of our city are, are, are remarkable. And so to make sure that we're capturing all of the potential themes, it's essential that we do have samples from each of the communities. So still to happen are our racialized communities are walking down large community meetings and we as a panel will be meeting with the groups that you see um, uh, there before. What's important to emphasize here is that as a panel we feel that we have started the process very much of getting very important themes that are consistent, that are, um, that are mentioned in multiple domains and multiple places but that we have not yet finished the work um, uh, to date. So we have, uh, we through the uh, expertise of Kojo um, Institute have uh, made sure that the, there has been community support. Um, so there's been available on-site public counseling and support resources, childcare has been uh, made available, fantastic food and drink have been provided. Um, every, all of our venues were accessible and will continue to be so. Um, uh, information concerning consent, all of this is in place, as well as anonymity in session notes with guarantee. So how we actually went about doing this 
before we get to the scene, um, is um, uh, facilitators explore school safety through fo focus areas of looking at as you directed us to look at bullying prevention, intervention, responding and reporting. Participants in the groups were asked what they would stop, start and continue in each category. And then table facilitators supported safe, insightful table conversations and captured notes and key narratives. Um, and then those notes were um, analyzed by the Kojo um, Institute. So now moving on to what are the themes? Now, I want to, or we want to make sure to emphasize that these are themes to date. We're not coming to you with recommendations yet that you need to approve, but rather uh, recognizing that we are not complete in our undertaking, that there's still engagement work to be done, including the surveys. But these are, we wanted to present to you the, the kind of major themes that have come to date. So in the area of prevention, there is an, uh, 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 eight, eight themes that have, um, have risen to the fore. So one is to create a supportive, positive culture based on trust, equity, and accountability. Two, provide mental health support, social and emotional learning, role models, and safe spaces for students. Three, make better use of diverse community partnership opportunities. Listen to the voices of students and engage them in problem solving and peer support. Five is update policies and procedures and review regularly, including for oppressive practices. Six, provide staff with anti-oppression and bullying prevention training. Seven is distribute resources fairly across schools and evaluate school climate. And eight is to evaluate how students are supervised in schools online. So these are, uh, I've listed them as one to eight, but they are, not, um, uh, they are not weighted in terms of what was said. They're just put together in this, uh, in this particular order. A summary of themes in, this, in the area of intervention is to train staff and students in intervention techniques, ensure policies do not punish students who stand up to bullies, and offer mental health and support services to victims. In the area of responding, the major themes that have been expressed by the community to date include continue the public consultation process underway and take bullying seriously. Two, invest in teachers, train them in restorative justice and hold them accountable. Three, is develop effective anti-oppressive policies using a consultative process. Four, review consequences for bullies and victims after an incident and re-examine the suspension expulsion process using an equity lens. Five, is parents should be involved in the resolution process after bullying incidents, held responsible for their own behavior and offered culturally appropriate support. Lastly, have open and respectful communication that balances with privacy requirements. When it comes to the reporting, there are um, uh, the following five uh, suggestions, themes, and that is create a culture of accountability that supports reporting and train all staff on reporting policies. Explore independent reporting mechanisms, ensure safe processes that account for the experience of marginalized communities, Honor the voice of parents, respond meaningfully to reports, and follow up in a timely and thorough manner. Build trust with racialized community. And lastly, collect and track disaggregated data more effectively and report in a transparent manner subject to privacy regulations. The last um, uh, summary of themes are just general themes that say update the curriculum to include mental well-being, equity, and anti-bullying support, increase funding to school mental health resources and community support, and transparently evaluate schools and have independent reporting mechanisms. So the last slide we're talking about, the, the last two slides, community consultation, the ongoing work. So there have been um, outstanding sessions to date. These are uh, themes based on these 
uh, preliminary um, uh, uh, rest, uh, suggestions from the, the populations that we have spoken with. Uh, further sessions will take place in one format or another um, in, the, uh, uh, in the fall. Uh, we are very much uh, needing to, re re to get information from students, from parents and staff, to make uh, uh, through survey to ensure that we're getting the voices of all of the key uh, uh, participants and key stakeholders in this. So there may be uh, themes that do arise as further, um, as further consultation un, uh, unfolds, and they will be rolled into what we do with our final recommendations. So they'll be uh, captured there, um, and we will uh, um, uh, have community feedback from all the consultations and surveys, including expert advice, evidence, and form practice. So in response to the remaining public consultations, below or postponed, the racialized community a general session and panel only sessions with uh, involving students, staff, union leaders and advisory chairs. All three of us are absolutely dedicated to making sure that we have student voice and, uh, uh, and that we have a robust picture of the experience for students. So after schools reopen, this panel will finish the public consultation, complete the panel only sessions, release the public online survey for students, staff and parents complete a final report, and that will ensure that we are capturing not only the voices of those who have been um, uh, have, have participated, our experts, our surveys, but also looking to see what are the systemic needs, the changes that may be required to be the most effective strategy to make change. So thank you um, uh, through the chair open to the next step. Thank you, Dr. Clinton, uh, for, for presenting that report. And uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, to you, the entire panel, and Kojo Institute, um, and all of the other researchers that uh, have been supporting your work, uh, thank you so much for conducting this work on the behalf of the Board of Trustees. Uh, we specifically struck a, a committee that was at arm's reach uh, so that you could work independently uh, to collect the community voice. And, uh, and we certainly appreciate the work that has been done thus far. I am going to open um, this up for questions. And uh, as always, I will go through roll call. Um, and I will start with... Um, uh, we'll go with Trustee Tut. Do you have any questions or comments um, on the report? No questions. Just wanted to say uh, thank you to the entire team for uh, um, and Dr. Clinton for running us through that presentation. Uh, very detailed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Taken Miller. I just had to take it off mute. Thank you very much. It's a very, very interesting, and I think it'll be even more interesting when we get the rest of it, uh, you know, in December. Uh, it will be interesting to see what the evidence-based information data that comes forward will be. Uh, and thank you for what you're doing. It's, it's very much needed and very much appreciated. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Maholland. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Miller. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much to the panel um, and everyone involved, um, and especially thank you to Dr. Chopin for that uh, report. I just wanted um, a clarification around some of the terms. So uh, there was cyber physical bullying, verbal ver bullying, as well as social bullying. Um, and I just wanted to get a better sense of um, did you see a lot of overlap in the data uh, between the groups? What specifically um, do we mean where, when we're reading social bullying? Um, if I could just get that, that 
50% of, of those terms. Yep, so I can, I can speak to that through the chair. Yes? Yes, Dr. Clinton, go ahead. Right. Um, uh, so these the, these are the um, for the um, the research field describes as the various forms of bullying that happen. So relational bullying is um, it can start very early, um, and it is you're not coming to my birthday party. So it's the exclude that kind of thing that starts that starts early. Um, but the the um, relational aggression of uh, talking about somebody behind their back, making, making them excluded from the group. And I can say that we have, um, uh, we have reports of all, all, of the, all of the types of bullying um, uh, have, have, been, um, have been reported uh, by our consultation. Um, and if the if the point that um, that you're uh, uh, underscoring here is that perhaps a, a glossary of terms or an inclusion of a definition of each of the types would be useful, then that's much appreciated. Uh, Trustee Miller, follow up. Uh, no, thank you. I, re I appreciate that. Um, I think that I'm done for questions right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Danko. Thank you. And through the chair, I have a couple of questions. And I just want to thank the panel, uh, the whole team, because I, I understand that the sessions that you've had to attend and, and the stories that you've been hearing were quite challenging to listen to. I heard from people who attended the meeting as public members. Um, so for the panel, I know that must have been a challenge. And I really appreciate that uh, you've done what you've done and compiled it in the way that you have for us today. The questions I had, the first is around, I know we'll be getting to specific strategies, but as we look forward to building a survey for students, um, one of the questions I'm wondering if, if this will be asked is about supervision and sort of where bullying happens. So one of the themes was that we need to look at um, how students are supervised. And, you know, we, we know that bullying often, when it does happen, it tends to be away from adults uh, because if it happened in front of adults, one would hope someone would intervene. So would that be something that we'd be asking in the survey for students in terms of when or where does bullying happen? Dr. Dr. Clinton? Yes, so again, um, uh, thank you for that, and thank you, uh, very much appreciate your comments about, um, about what the experience is like for us as panelists. It has been pretty rough at times. Um, uh, so yes, absolutely, we will be asking the, uh, uh, the, the, the surveys that, um, that are available and that Dr. Viancourt and Pepper are being um, putting together include uh, essential information is, as you point out, of where does bullying happen, so that um, uh, strategies can uh, can be implemented to deal with that. Evelyn Myrie, last. Thank you um, for that. Dinko. Yep. Yes. Uh, one brief question. Under community consultations, one of the themes was reviewing consequences using an equity lens. I was just wondering if you could expand a little bit on what was meant um, by that. So do you have, can you just put us into the, um, uh, which slide number that was? That was slide 20. The, the bottom left um, square. Right, so I'm wondering, um, uh, I, I'm wondering if this may be something that um, uh, the consultants may have a better perspective on. I have my own impression of it, but I wonder if we have more of an impression from um, uh, from uh, Shelley or Tita. For, and just before um, we go yeah. to a response, just one moment, okay. uh, Trustee, someone's not on mute. So if you're, uh, if you just want to ensure that you're on mute, that would be appreciated. Uh, so, sorry about that. Please continue. Oh, that's okay. Um, sorry, I'm just going to go back to the slide, even though I was about to uh, answer. I will. This is Kika. I will um, say a couple things, and then Shelley will um, confirm uh, 
uh, sorry, re confirm the, the concept or, or, or offer her own. Review consequences for bullies and victims after an incident and re-examine the suspension and expulsion process using an equity lens. So we see two things happening. We see um, from an equity perspective in terms of depend dependent upon the identities um, involved, we see disparity um, uh, and disparity in the types of um, consequences that people get and for whom. So who is being bullied? What kind of bullying are we seeing? So is the perpetrator... Um, does the perpetrator have dominant identities? When we see the perpetrators having dominant identities, we tend to see not as, um, not as severe consequences. Um, and it doesn't mean that the, the, the targets are no longer experiencing, um, you know, the, the bullying at the hands of those perpetrators, given those consequences. So, it, you know, sort of questions around whether those consequences are working, whether they're equitably laid out. So, what would happen if the roles were reversed and the identity of the, of, of the I'm using the word perpetrator, uh, um, of, the, of the bully, if the identity of the bully um, is, is one that is marginalized, so kids who are in poverty, kids who are racialized, kids who are Muslim, et cetera, uh, do we see that for them the consequences are, are heavier? And so this message actually came through, um, and we wanted to note that we need to pay close attention to how we, you know, how we consequence and for whom. Shelley, did you want to add real, right quick through the chair? Um, thank you. Through the chair. Um, Kika said basically everything that I wanted to say, and I don't have access to specific Hamilton uh, school board statistics, but in general we know that um, black children specifically tend to be expelled and suspended at higher rates than white children. And that came up as a comment from the parents in the community. Um, so we wanted to see that reflected here to be sure that that is – it also ties into the collecting disaggregated data. The data on the consequences probably should – will probably end up being a recommendation. We don't know yet, but it's going to be interesting to look at to whether or not we need to collect disaggregated data on uh, suspension and expulsion rates to see if that disparity is happening here. Thank you. Thank you couldn't you. see it I was nodding as you were talking. Um, all of you, thank you. And actually, the, my, my last question, I guess, was around uh, at what point, and I guess it's probably already happening, but the, the consultation with the experts to develop specific strategies, so the disaggregated data collection is something that our board has talked about um, in, in the past about how do we get more discrete data so that we can really understand what's going on and understand how to intervene and then whether or not that intervention is working. So would we expect to see something like an example of, of what type of data should be collected in what way or to what level... How specific do you think we can get with strategies to deal with some of these themes as we consult with the experts going forward? Dr. Clinton? Um, I would, I, I think that I would pass this over to, um, uh, to Director Fugger. Left. We have, um, uh, we have evidence that uh, when the disaggregated data, such as through a school census, is done in other boards, uh, then uh, these these disparities and the equity lens is is very very sharply shown. Uh, I just I wonder back to um, um, uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Figueredo what um, uh, what what you would respond here, Dr. Figueredo. So uh, thank you, Alex. Um, so that was part of what I mentioned around our equity action plan. As trustees know, we did our, our working with the equity secretary and Patrick Case. Don Danko. Joined. Um, so I'll begin again. So as I stated before, the connection to our equity action plan will be very important. Uh, we've been working with Patrick Case um, and supported us and through our equity human rights officer to do the staff census this year. And, and, and now we have that piece. And the second piece, as Patrick has guided us, is around the data driving um, intervention data driving to look at this misrepresentation of, of a specific population is the student census. So our plan is to have our student census uh, for this winter to be uh, completed and we're working with our research department um, through Superintendent Sharon Stefanian's office, our human rights officer, and also through other boards that have, have gone through this path and that's why uh, that's a key step for us being able to disaggregate data um, for not only safe schools, but any kind of misrepresentation of certain populations in uh, anything to do with student achievement and student well-being. 
Uh, Dawn, do you have further questions for follow-up? No, I just would leave with one comment, and I appreciate that we've captured that some students experience bullying once or twice a year or a couple of times a year, but there are smaller numbers that are impacted monthly, weekly, daily, and I think we need to have strategies to identify and intervene in those cases, and I really hope that emerges as we go forward. Thank you. Thanks, Don, for your comments. Um, okay, so uh, Becky Buck, Trustee Buck. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I'm not used to the reverse order. Uh, I just I I had a comment. So at the beginning of um, this journey uh, of defining yeah. bullying, sorry. Um, how is it that we move forward when not everybody will work with the same definition of bullying? So uh, I will give an example of my kids. My one daughter, she will say she's being bullied when I tell her that she needs to eat spinach. Um, and uh, well, well intentioned and spinach is a good thing to her. I'm telling her to do something that she, uh, she feels is a punishment or is an, is an unkindness directed at her. Um, I see that as a significant challenge implementing uh, any or almost all of these suggestions just because not everybody is working from the same framework of what bullying is. And thinking back to, I believe it was November um, to December, our board worked really hard uh, at naming what bullying is. But... I do, a part of me is reserved in, in, in trusting that everybody is now working under the same definition just because it, it's become a catch-all phrase almost in, in, some, in some minds that uh, it's something negative done towards me when it's not necessarily a negative thing. Um, do we have any comments about that? Thanks so much, Becky. Um, I'm going to move to Director Figueredo, and then uh, you can pass that over to Dr. Clinton uh, uh, as needed. Yeah. Um, so thank you to uh, Trustee Beck. I appreciate the comment and question. And I think that is where we need um, to do some work with our experts to really have a, a clear definition and communicate the different forms of bullying and, the, and what it means when it's a power imbalance. Um, uh, I think that's the work ahead of us. Um, not only with the recommendations coming from the panel, but one of them, one of them I think, will be around clarity and a framework of what it is and, w and what it isn't. Because under safe schools, as you know, bullying is one is one uh, category of an infraction, but it is something we're going to have to work at and communicate and um, and provide further clarity um, of all the different forms. Thank you, uh, Dr. Clinton. Yeah, I, I, I agree uh, uh, completely um, through the chair that this is a this is an educational um, uh, it's an educational issue, uh, to Join. Uh, to have the definition and I, I uh, personally and I'm just speaking personally now I think that it will be very important that um, uh, we have kids. Um, uh, part of the process of defining what the bullying experience is like for them, what, how it's different from conflict, and you know, um, uh, as you as words become a common parlance, uh, they can lose their definition. You know, so I think it's going to be very, very important that we do that. There's good education about what the differences what the differences are, and the kids are involved in that uh, definition uh, evolution. Joined. Thank you. Um, I'll just make the note that we normally don't have these many dropped calls during a meeting, uh, so tonight is extra special. Uh, with that, um, Trustee Buck, uh, did you have did that clarify your question, or did you need any further questions? Um, it, no, that definitely addressed it, uh, and I'm uh, glad to hear that staff and the panel are aware that this is something that we we've got to prioritize uh, as we roll out things in the fall and um, in the future. Uh, in, in my mind's eye, when I imagine all of this 
being lived out. Uh, I really see a lot of potential in our younger grades, kindergarten, grade one, grade two, where uh, teachers are able to have those conversations in the moment about uh, situations between students as they arrive. Uh, and making sure that staff are working under the same definition of the, this one word of bullying and, and naming things accurately. I think that is um, going to be key to our success. Uh, so I will um, stop with that. I did have one other. Um, I did want to, um, on, on page 820, or slide 20, uh, there in the, the center square, it says, ensure policies do not punish students who stand up to bullies. And I think this is so key. Um, th that can be a deterrent for so many in a situation who are witnessing um, uh, these behaviors that they feel like they might be punished. So I'm very glad to see that there. I am uh, wondering, though, if in situations of physical bullying, um, what does that look like? Because I know that oftentimes the consequence will be the same for any parties involved in a physical altercation. And so uh, what does that look like moving forward? Are we, does, does physical um, bullying, is that really captured here? Can students who intervene in physical situations, uh, are they guaranteed that they're not going to end up suspended or expelled? Thanks, Trustee Buck. And that might be, uh, we might need further discussion as, as this rolls out, but I'll turn first to Director Figueredo and then to uh, Dr. Clinton. Uh, Director Figueredo? Um, so thank you, and through uh, the chair, I think Trustee, Beck, um, Trustee Buck's first question really starts to highlight the importance of some research I think the review panel will do around the bystander and what's the role of the bystander and, and um, some work has been done with PrevNet around, uh, around the rate of bullying incidents that will stop and won't repeat when someone intervenes in the moment. But we also need to educate people around what it, 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 how what it is to be a bystander and how to do it safely. The second part of your question, I think, speaks to the specific details when there is a safe schools infraction, is the importance of the principal's inquiry to understand, you know, not only what happened in the moment, moment, uh, you know, are there mitigating circumstances? What precipitated this event? Um, what led to this? Because sometimes if the moment, um, uh, if the moment is investigated in isolation of what precipitated, uh, which could be some historical factors, could be uh, racism, it could be uh, uh, repeated behaviors of microaggressions that led to this, um, I think it's important that that speaks to about our, our procedures uh, and hopefully that will be something that I think will evolve through this uh, the final report. So those are my comments and I'll ask if Dr. Jean Clinton or has anything else to add to that. No, I, um, uh, uh, Director Figueredo, I, I think that um, uh, they're, they're very, very salient points. And I, I think the other thing that came to mind as the trustee was asking the question is we have heard repeatedly about students having to leave a school, a student who has experienced bullying needing to leave a school um, uh, as, uh, as part of the strategy to, to just to, to have it stop. So I think this point is capturing what you have put your, your finger on, uh, and that is that we need to, we need to ensure um, uh, that, uh, that safety, um, um, equity is, uh, is, is permeated throughout all of the recommendations that we make and then through the policies and, um, uh, and uh, understanding the mitigating factors. Absolutely. Further follow-up at all, uh, Trustee Buck? Uh, no, that is it for me. Thank you so much for those answers. It's um, very encouraging. Thank you. Um, Trustee Bingham. Yes, um, I really do. Uh, Trustee Buck actually said the majority of it um, from what I'm thinking. Um, I'm Definition of bullying, definition of 
what is standing up to bullying, definition of uh, all those things. Um, are we all on the same page? If a student comes in and says, I'm being bullied, do they understand what it is? Do we understand that they're not thinking the same way that we are? So there's so many things to that. Um, in, in the long run, one of the intriguing things that was there was how do we put it in a curriculum? How do we get all of those things into the curriculum, uh, which is a future thing? And, and it's curriculum. When we say curriculum, we think um, uh, ministry. Can we safely, easily put it into policy for us? But making a definition, making it known to everybody. There's so many things that still need to be done. Um, in that and even if we get to the end of this report are we still all of us on the same page at the end of this report and i think that's going to be a crucial part of it all um to see if we all had that same idea had that same understanding uh had the same definition in our heads as we go forward with all of this um uh, so it there's there's a lot there's a lot more that we need to do uh and I really feel a lot of it is around the definition of what we think it is, what we're growing it into, what parents think it is, what um, children think it is. How do we stand up to? How do we stand up to bullying? Are we all on the same page of how to do that? Do we understand more than just being on the same page? Do we understand? Do we have a definition for that? So there's a massive amount of, of things that we need to do, but I do real, realize this report is incredible. Um, thank you for the amount of work you put into us to this point, let alone when we do get a final report in the end. Um, so basically, whether there's a question in there or not, uh, that was my ranting uh, about the whole thing. Again, it's, it really does come down to definition of everything break it all down into different definitions so thank you thank you trustee bingham and uh you'd said at the beginning that uh trustee buck had had got to those questions first are you wanting a further comment from staff or from dr clinton at this moment uh basically i'm really i'm i'm interested in one definition uh, are we all on the same what what struck me was that as we're saying are we all on the same page or eventually we'll be on the same page but all the information that's being gathered nobody's on the same page and that's concerning that means in the long run we have to figure out what that definition is but everybody else has a different definition of it in their heads it's all different that kind of makes me nervous so the amount of info coming in, do we really understand what everybody's um, thoughts on, on the definition of bullying is? Um, so if somebody wants to comment on sure. that. Okay. Uh, so, I'll, um, so I'll go to Dr. Clinton. Um, if you can just talk to, um, do, do we have a shared definition of bullying? Uh, and if so, or if not, is that important? Um, uh, how, how does this kind of get defined uh, as we work with students? Because I would imagine that grade one stu students' understanding would also change as they aged. Thank you. Right, yeah. Um, uh, so um, thank you. Uh, so I think this is an absolutely key point um, and thank you for uh, uh, thank you for bringing it to the bringing it to the forefront here. I think that we have a definition of what bullying is, um, and what the task is going to be after our report and with some recommendations from us is how do you ensure that the interpretation of this definition of bullying is true to the original uh, true to the original definition, and so that is going to. Um, that is going to take a, a, a very large um, endeavor. Um, you've mentioned about um, about things at the local level rather than uh, waiting on the, the uh, uh, provincial level. Are there curricula around social and emotional learning uh, that can, as an example, which is one of the other um, themes 
that can help uh, children not just be exposed to bullying on a uh, on an annual basis once when a, somebody comes in, but that there is through um, a safe school strategy and an equity action plan that is permeated throughout, and that the interpretation um, uh, becomes less and less and less, uh, and the understanding becomes deeper. That's what I would. That's how I would respond. We need to be thinking of it through an implementation lens, which is a big part of thinking about the educational aspect of it. Yes, that is exactly, exactly. You read my mind. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Clinton. Uh, Trustee Archer. Hello. Thank you for the report. And Dr. Clinton, I want to thank you for listening. Um, I quite enjoyed reading the report, and I'm glad to hear that uh, we're going to have a definition of bullying. And I've said that from the fall, from day one, is what bullying means to me and what it means to someone else is totally different, and we all have to be on the same page. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Trustee Deek. Uh, thank you, and, and I'm echo echoing uh, some of the former trustees. Uh, appreciate that yeah. uh, the team going into, you know, doing these consultations and and wading into the hot spot and and uh, and, and managing this with um, uh, with dignity. So thank you so much for that. Um, so a, a couple of questions. I, I saw here that we started in grade four. Um, showing some of the data showing, you know, shows from grade four on. Just wondering um, how we are capturing the younger voices. Um, so, Dr. Clinton? Yes, so that's a, it's a, a very good question. Um, uh, capturing at grade four for the Hamilton board has been done because of an instrument uh, that's used that you will have uh, seen reviews of, I'm sure, the... Um, um, uh, the middle uh, years development instrument, the MDI. Um, traditionally, um, self-reported um, uh, surveys, they, they think about doing them uh, at, at grade four, grade four and up. The question of how do we capture what's happening younger than, um, uh, than grade four uh, is one that, um, uh, one that actually uh, uh, puzzles us and keeps, keeps me awake. Um, and so we will be having consulta consultation with our expert panel to ask them what are the what are some of the ways that those that data can um, uh, uh, can be collected. That's um, that's my uh, my response to that. I wonder if uh, Director Figueredo, if you've got any other thing to add. Um, thank you, through the chair. Dr. Jean Clinton has captured, I mean, the ministry expectations around grade four up in terms of surveys. Um, typically, the voice of the younger children is captured through the voice of the parents. But we need to figure, continue to figure out how do we, because we know how important early intervention is and how do we bring that experience and that voice to the table. Um, in terms of this review, I know that at consultation sessions by the panel that we had younger children coming, but it's been the parents who have attended to provide their uh, the, their experience through their children. So we'll be taking that question away to, to the experts to see what research maybe already exists out there that we could that could be capitalized on uh, for this report and even for future sort of consultations or gathering that, that the voice of the early years. Follow up. Um, no, that's uh, that's great. Thank you, because um, it's important. And leading from that question, too, is I know uh, when we're looking at here and it's showing, you know, how often they are bullied in a year, are we capturing length of time that they've been bullied? So if bullying has gone on for a number of years, like is, is there or is, is bullying in short, shorter sort of periods or is it? often over lengths of time, so I'm just wondering if we're capturing that as well. Um, to Dr. Clinton? Oh, 
Dr. Clinton? Hi, yes, sorry, I was muted again. Um, I know the tool, um, uh, uh, the MDI, that's used in grade four and grade seven, but off the top of my head, I can't think of um, uh, a question that asks if this is year on year bullying or if they just ask during the school year. Um, uh, but that's certainly something that's easily found out. Okay, thank you. Uh, for, um, for the question? Yeah, so, um, and the other one was um, you talked about uh, uh, students that were victimized or what we're, we were looking at are often bullied. So I'm just wondering if we're, caught, if we're capturing victimized by who? Is it by peers? Is it by older students? Is it by parents? Um, just wondering who they are being um, victimized by. Dr. Clinton? Um, so that is the, the, the um, uh, survey data from the Safe School Survey, which I am not as familiar with. So back over to uh, Director Laredo. Do you know of that, if that's specific to uh, bullying by peers, or is, could it be others? My apologies. I don't know that. Um, I don't know the answer to that. So we Dr. Find Dr. Dr. Figueredo? Uh, so thank you. Um, I, I know Sharon Stefanian is on the call too, because it is from our MDI. I, I'd have to go back and look at the question. I don't have it on the top of my head, but I'm wondering if Superintendent Stefanian knows uh, regarding that question and how it's asked in MDI. If not, we can take that away and uh, have an answer quickly to trustees. Okay, thank you. Because I think it's going to be as, as we move forward with this and, and start into the recommendations. Um, obviously, you know, recommendations for the board and for our schools, but also, um, and I don't know how we're going to handle this, but recommendations for parents and for communities, because I think, as we've said from the outset, you know, this takes a whole village, right, if we're going to really change this, um, and, and they copy bullying behavior that they see, so, you know, are we capturing that so that we can um, show that that's causing causing some of the bullying and and mm -hmm. be able to address it, um, and then I'm just wondering by um, in some of the breakdowns. So are are we going to see how we compare uh, how we compare to other communities and boards? Um, director figure I guess Director Figueredo, um, and then you can pass that to Dr. Clinton if needed. But do we have comparison data? So um, through the through the chair, um, the only kind of data we would have would be any kind of public data that boards report broadly on system data compared to safe schools and and number of, of bullying incidents. Uh, I don't, as you know, trustees know this year we reported not only on the in, infractions uh, in safe schools but also all the incidents because we have a we are tracking that these. Um, digitally now and that's how they're being reported so I don't that's that's only at the system level so I don't know what other boards have reported uh, publicly and uh, typically it's not like EQAO where we see sort of that sort of um, comparison so it does vary across the province in terms of what do what people do put out publicly and other boards who have been down this road further will even disaggregate um, by race ethnicity in terms of, uh, of student representation in, in their safe schools data, which is an, an area that likely will come as a recommendation. So I don't have um, co comparison broadly, only in terms of what each board does as a system, as the province doesn't provide a report that shows each board like it does in other sort of metrics. So hopefully coming out of this, perhaps. Joined. As we're as we're working with the, um, the you know the the Ministry of Education on this, uh, maybe there will be some standard reporting practices coming out. Um, and then, and then I uh, just in regards to um, profile of a bully, um, and I think are we going to see um, some of that because I think there's misconceptions on on what a bully is, and I know we've talked a lot about definition of bullying. But I, I, I also think there's a lot of um, uh, people who, who, who when, they, when they picture a bully, 
you know, they think of this brawny, bigger kid that's bullying. And from what I'm hearing, that's not the case. Um, but so I'm just, just wondering if we are going to, out of this, uh, we will able to, we'll be able to see those sort of profiles. Um, uh, yep. Dr. Dr. Clinton. Yep. So uh, again, another another very important um, another very important piece of information. Sorry, I've just got family coming in here now. Um, uh, the um, uh, the the picture the picture of what is the profile of a bully is very very interesting uh, because it is uh, not what you describe but in fact the uh, uh, many many of the children who are involved in bullying are the um, are the all stars um, in school and so in order to uh, I don't think that there will be uh, a profile of who the bully is um, uh, but maybe a, a compilation. Of uh, who who might who might it be, and I think I think as you've indicated that people are going to be surprised um, uh, that it's not just the usual the usual people, but that, I think that will be an important part to include in the uh, report. Trustee uh, Deep, thank you, um, and and I think um, I'll just with this last one is that. Um, expulsion. So we do hear at expulsions, um, you know, when we have behavior that we do have to, Joined. you know, is an expellable offense, right, when they've committed, when they've done something. Um, but we do hear that, you know, that they've, it was as a result of ongoing bullying uh, was the reason out of retaliation. And not that it doesn't mean that we don't hold the student accountable, but it is going to be interesting to see how we capture that and maybe even in the expulsion reporting to make sure that that information or when it comes to us um, is captured. Um, anyway, so that's, I think that's all I'll say on that. Um, and I think just the rest of it's been captured by other trustees. Um, and I, and even just break down, um, talking about breakdown by community group or by community by group by grade. Um, I'm sure we're going to see some of that because I know you, you know, in, in specific communities we've been, uh, you've been talking to. So it'll be interesting to see that breakdown and the recommendations coming out of that. So, um, Sorry, with that, I just, again, appreciate all the work that you're doing. It's such important work, and I'm looking forward to hearing that final report. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Archer. I spoke already. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Trustee Galindo. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I do have a couple of comments and questions. I'll first start by saying thank you. Thank you to the members of the review panel, to the advisors and experts, uh, to our friends at the Kojo Institute for helping with project management and community engagement support. I appreciate it immensely, and I'm sure my colleagues do as well. I'm impressed by the level of community uh, engagement uh, so far. Now, now I do believe someone is not on mute, so I'll, <laughs> I'll, let, some, I'll let them mute themselves, but um, I'm impressed with the level of community engagement support and the support so far uh, that has been captured, the unique voices of so many individuals, communities, students, and staff. Uh, I think it's so important that we've captured those voices in this report, and, and I'm happy with the work that's been done so far and the work that will be continued to be done in the next couple of months. Um, and in addition to that, of course, the uh, knowledge and expertise that's brought forward by the experts in, in the field. Um, one of the things that I'm fascinated by is the statistics that I'm seeing in this report, the unique statistics uh, at our board. Um, to me, what that translates into is that the solution to bullying is going to be unique and different to different schools and communities. And I've you know, noticed this when I would knock on doors during campaign seasons that uh, the needs and, and uh, required supports to address issues such as bullying at one school may be different at one school than another. And I think that although it's going to be good that we look at uh, several systematic 
solutions at our school board. It's also important to remember that we also have a large school board with varying communities and unique um, uh, schools and, and, and demographics and, and geographic locations. So uh, I, I would hope that we're not looking at a blanket solution, but rather one that addresses the unique needs uh, of every individual school. Uh, and I think that's going to be one of the bigger picture things that we look at in the next couple of months is we have the systematic uh, solutions that we're going to deal with at a board level, but how do we also address the unique needs of certain students, communities, and uh, really geographic areas, uh, if not schools already? Uh, I, I think it's clear that there's a lot of work that needs to be done by this report, uh, as we're seeing, uh, but at the same time, I'm also inspired by, uh, you know, even in, in recent weeks, what we've seen with COVID-19 is that we managed to change the face of education, 200 years worth of education in a matter of weeks. And recognizing that it probably will take time to implement a lot of the recommendations that will come forward later this year, uh, I also know that uh, we can move quickly on a lot of the recommendations. Uh, and I, I'm, up, I'm, I'm optimistic about that, and I'm, and I'm excited to see uh, what happens next. Um, I have to build off of Trustee Danko's comments around the difficulty in capturing those diverse issues uh, in our specific communities. I did allude to that already. Um, I have to speak to the equity lens as well, and I know that uh, Trustee Buck, Trustee uh, Bingham, and, and Dr. Clinton, you've spoken to that, especially around the definition of bullying. Um, and, I, and I think of poverty as an example. The issue of poverty is one that we've seen all levels of government attempt to address without a clear definition or a varying definition, uh, depending on the level of government that you're dealing with. And even federally, I don't think that we had a federal definition of poverty until the last year or two, but that never prevented the federal government from addressing the issue. So recognizing that, yes, the definition of bullying is something that's important to capture. Uh, I also agree with my colleagues that uh, it's something that, that, at the end of the day, is fluid. The definition of bullying is fluid and is something that we're going to need to refine and hash out consistently as time goes on. Uh, and I think of cyberbullying as a perfect example of that. 25 years ago, really, there was no such thing as cyberbullying, and it wasn't something that, that hit the mainstream until a couple of years after that. So uh, while we hash out an exact definition of bullying, from a policy lens, from a strategic lens, uh, it's also important to keep in mind that it, it's also fluid at the end of the day, but should not prevent us from addressing the needs of our communities. Now, uh, with regards to the questions that I have, I do have three uh, broad questions here, and I'll let the chair decide who will answer those questions. Um, with regards to capturing the unique needs of particular schools, um, I, I'm not sure how we've been able to capture specific data for specific schools if we have. Uh, that's my question. Uh, how are we going to make sure that the unique needs at individual schools are addressed in addition to what we're going to be doing system-wide to address bullying? Uh, is that something that the panel has taken into consideration, and how are we going to make sure that that's addressed? That's the question. Okay. So, um, sorry, Cam, can you, or uh, Trustee Galindo, can you repeat your first question? Mm -hmm. The first question is, how are uh, we going to capture the unique needs of each individual school, uh, assuming that we've been capturing some kind of data there, um, and okay. is, is the panel yeah, going so to be we'll, able to uh, find just solutions Just before there? we go into the second uh, question, I'm just going to turn that over. So, um, so I'll turn that to Director Figueredo. So thank you, through the chair. Uh, Trustee Galindo, uh, so we already have a tool, so as uh, you heard Dr. Jean Clinton mention around our middle development index tool, the MDI tool, which we brought into the board from University of British Columbia um, two years ago. Um, each school then obtains their data uh, around many indicators, and one of those areas is around um, specific questions around bullying, where does it occur most in the school, um, and also where we obtain that data around our um, caring adult in terms of connectedness, how important that is. So although we present the system data to the trustees, each school has their own data that we share on our business intelligent tool. So they are able to disaggregate and they're able to, to look at it. It's only between grades four and eight, but they're also able to look at it by grade and by, by classroom as well. 
So that, that already does exist. Um, does that answer your question? And if so, uh, Cam, do you want to repeat your second question? That was all one question so far. Um, no, I think it does. Thank you uh, to the chair and thank you to the director. I think for me it's, it's just important uh, to know that it is something that we're looking at, that we're not just looking at system-wide solutions. We're looking at solutions that can be implemented uniquely at each individual school, depending on what their needs are. Um, my second question is with regards to COVID-19. Now, I did speak to it in the uh, previous uh, agenda item or motion, uh, but I'm curious to know if, uh, I think the question might have been answered already in, in the previous agenda item, but um, COVID-19 has obviously thrown a wrench into a lot of, a lot of our plans, and uh, I would argue that uh, the nature of bullying pre-COVID-19 will look different, if not slightly different, post-COVID-19. And I think about uh, cyberbullying, for example, is one that uh, worked closely with, uh, with uh, verbal bullying in the classroom, right? Uh, one where, because they fed off of each other, um, the anxiety that students would bring to the classroom would stem from what they saw on social media. Um, I'm curious to know if there's a way to monitor uh, the prevalence of bullying during COVID-19 while schools are closed, and if that is going to impact any the outcome of any of the recommendations that are coming forward uh, post-COVID later this year, assuming that, that we're post-COVID when the report does come forward. But it's just something that I'm, I'm curious to know what the implementation or the effect of COVID-19 is having on overall data collection, research, and recommendations. That's question number two. Um, so to the director, um, and then over, to, yeah, I think you can decide if it's going to go over to Dr. Clinton, but um, the impact of the um, COVID-19 and distance learning on the research. Um, thank you for that. It's a, it's a very timely question. The reason I say that is our research analytics department uh, just shared with me today, and it'll be uh, some, um, something I'll be sharing with the review panel, and it's around the, uh, the coronavirus perspective. Our research analytics department has been looking at um, learning from history. Um, um, we can anticipate challenges and, and leverage the opportunity to, to build back better, and they've outlined key conditions and the impact on school closures, on uh, student achievement, the impact of, of e-learning environments um, and brick and mortar schools, but also the impacts on mental health after students are in quarantine. And there's some interesting stats um, related to jurisdictions who did close down um, in the, the impact on mental health. So that will be coming, and this report also will be was just shared with me today. And, and uh, as our, our research department is doing um, some research on our behalf to understand the impact of of crisis like this and of children being in quarantine. And there's some relevant information that I'll be sharing with the review panel and with the, um, the board of um, trustees in the future as well. Yep. Dr. Clinton? Yes, and um, uh, I think the excellent, uh, really excellent uh, uh, questions. I think the other thing that I can add is that the Offord Center here at McMaster is doing a, um, a, a big study, a call out for participants. Um, looking at the mental health and other aspects of uh, COVID-19 on uh, children and families. And so that uh, 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 Dr. Gonzalez is the, uh, the, the research chair um, uh, for that. So we will certainly be in touch with her to find out any of the learnings that they, that they have around this. Trustee Galindo. Thank you. To the chair, I appreciate the response to my second question. Um, now, my final question uh, is uh, with regards to budget, I, I just want to know for the record uh, if there's an updated figure uh, to what our budget is, uh, perhaps how much we've spent, and if we're still within budget. I certainly don't have an issue with how much we're spending on this very important report, but I also think it's important to be physically responsible. So I just want to see if there's uh, an updated figure on that. To the chair. Yep, Director Figueredo. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Um, um, as I brought to the trustees at that time, the projected budget was between $200,000 and $225,000 for this work. 
uh, and we were able to obtain a uh, um, transfer payment agreement from the province who funded this work up, uh, up to the amount of 150000 And in addition, we also received 50000 from the Hamilton Community Foundation. So we are still within a budget, and uh, we are sending at the end of May, we re are required to provide an update to the uh, ministry regarding our our funds to and we're um, the 150,000 provided by the ministry that is um, almost depleted. We just did a review of it the other day, and so we still have money that is um, outstanding from the Community Foundation, which takes us to 200, and the other portion was around dipping into our contingency fund uh, for the remainder amount if required up to 225. So that's where we're at, and we're still within the budget. Trustee Galindo. Thank you to the chair. I think that's great news, and I want to thank the director for that update. I think hearing that and seeing how far the panel has come with this interim report, uh, I'm very optimistic for uh, with regards to what the recommendations are going to be in a couple of months. Um, and just to echo the comment that uh, Chair Johnson made at the beginning, uh, uh, there's a lot of eyes on, on this report and a lot of partners and stakeholders uh, that are going to be playing close attention to what these recommendations are going to be uh, locally. It's not only an issue that we're looking to address, but it's an issue that provincially uh, and a lot of other school boards and perhaps even nationally uh, folks are paying attention to, uh, as I think the work we're being, the work that we're doing here is groundbreaking. So thank you so much to everyone that, that's participated so far, and uh, um, I thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Student uh, trustee Prozik. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, the, um, most of my questions were actually answered up until now already. So um, thank you to everyone, for all the trustees, for your robust questions. Um, they addressed just, just as I was wondering. So um, I'd just like to give a huge thank you to all, our, all of our um, panel members again. Um, this is incredible work. And, um, you know, hearing these stories that these students have to share isn't easy. Um, you know, you're seeing a really grim side of the education system, and it can be really difficult. And um, I just want to thank you so much for being the brave ones to participate. And I just want to thank all the students for being the brave ones to come out about their stories and um, contribute to this. And, you know, just so much as getting an opportunity to hear those stories, um, getting an opportunity to voice those stories and um, having them heard can be a beacon of hope for a lot of these students. So thank you so much for your work so far. Um, I can't wait to see what comes out of this report. Um, I'd also just like to take a second to reemphasize um, Trustee Galindo's point on uh, school autonomy and, you know, addressing individual needs for individual schools. Um, I think that was a really important point that he brought up. But, um, you know, a lot of these these solutions aren't just going to be, um, many of these solutions aren't just going to be one quick systematic fix. Um, what we're addressing when we address bullying is cultures. Um, we're addressing, you know, the way students interact. We're addressing um, how these students interact with each other, these friendships, these um, the lack of friendships, stuff like that. So um, I think it's really important to reemphasize the school autonomy and, you know, keep in mind that each school is going to have different needs throughout this. And um, I'm really excited to see how, kind of how that's addressed in the final report as well. But um, once again, thank you so much for this work. Um, it's not easy work to complete, and um, it doesn't go unnoticed. So thanks so much. Uh, student trustee Prozik, thank you so much for extending uh, your thanks and for especially for recognizing all of our students and families and community members that have been participating in this process. Um, this has been a collaborative process. And so uh, while it's been conducted uh, and put together by our panel, the, there's been truly heavy lifting by all parties that have been engaged. Um, student trustee um, Medi. Um, no questions at this time, but I just want to echo the comments of the other trustees and say thanks to the panel and everyone involved for all the hard work you're doing, um, especially in amplifying the voices of students and that of the community and kind of prioritizing research in regards to systemic and institutional issues, especially among marginalized and minority communities. And I really think that this could be a great opportunity to initiate conversation in regards to why these um, kind of power imbalances that keep coming up are in place. 
and the way that we're kind of addressing repeated instances of bullying from the same perpetrators as opposed to repeated instances of maybe discrimination or even microaggressions from multiple perpetrators, um, which are kind of a result of systemic inequities. So I really look forward to hearing more from the panel, and I hope to see the panel continue to work alongside our Student Senate, um, especially with initiatives like the upcoming Student Survey, because I know our senators would love to be a part of this work. So thank you so much for the update. Thank you. Um, so I had a, a few questions myself. Uh, with regards to the participants, um, so turning to uh, slides, what were they? Um, 8, 10, 9, 8, 11, and 8, 12. Do we have numbers on how many people or how many students participated? Uh, Director Figueroa. Sorry, just I'm looking at the slides. Um, you're asking around out of the face-to-face -face consultations if the data was collected um, by whether they were students mm -hmm. or community members. No, so we're looking at um, at the top of the um, slide it says 810 and at the bottom it says 9, um, but it's the uh, bullying HWDSB statistics. So we have, for example, grades four to six, seven yeah, to so eight, and then high school. Yeah, so just to be clear, these, these slides have, have been taken from our student survey MDI done a few years ago that we brought to trustees. They were imposed here as the most recent data. I can, I don't have that with me on top of my head, but we can provide that. It, it's the data that was shared um, in our Positive Culture and Wellbeing report two years ago, so it's, it's the review panel asked us to put some HWDSB statistics, the most recent one, and this is the most recent one, but we will give you the participation rates. I can tell you they're very high. The reason they're very high is because they're done uh, in each classroom. Our teachers help us facilitate them, uh, so they're done, and teachers carve out classroom time to do them. So our participation rates are very high um, in, in the MDI survey um, because of the, the, the approach we take. But I'll, I can get them for you unless Sharon Stefanian, who's on the phone right now, can recall the participation rates for, for them. I'll ask if she is able to or not we can. That's, that's okay. Um, are we, so just to be clear, um, when would our next report be coming forward then? Sorry, just so I'm clear, the next report. The next statistic. The, so when would we see, because you said that this data is two years old, so when would we see the next updated version? So thank you for the clarification. So as you know, we're required to do the um, Safe Schools report every two years. Nin um, 19, 20, this, this, these results were from 17, 18, and the next survey was to be done this year, and instead of uh, job action out of the way of that, and we decided not to do it separate outside of the review panel. So the next survey that will go out, it's uh, it's a survey that will be encompassed into this report with Dr. Tracy Valencourt and Deb Pepler. So it will be done uh, this fall, and that's the survey we'll be using, and uh, Tracy Valencourt and Deb Pepler are working with our research department. Um, so it will be next year when you'll see that, and it'll, and it'll be embedded in the report uh, coming to trustees from the review panel as well. Great. Um, just a comment, because um, when I'm looking at the, um, I guess, the data that we have now, so um, it would be good if there was consistencies between what was collected in, uh, between elementary panel and the secondary panel. Um, because it has it broken down. Um, you can see, for example, uh, that, you know, 76% of kids in grades 7 to 8 had previously reported that they had not experienced cyberbullying that year versus on the secondary panel, it would look like... Um, well, it, it doesn't even have cyberbullying as a, as a column. So it would be, or wait, does it? 
Uh, yeah, sorry, it does. It has 43.7%. So um, you, just to have some kind of consistency so we can see, I guess, if there's a pattern emerging, that would be interesting. Um, or if not, just to, to help us to understand why. So I'll leave that as a comment. It doesn't necessarily need to be addressed, per se, tonight in terms of what the reason is. Um, and then uh, just with regards to the themes, um, I really appreciate the work that's coming out. Um, will, will staff, will our HWBSB staff, uh, will we be able to have the raw data at the end? And um, the reason I'm asking that is because I imagine that our staff teams would want to delve deeper into the data um, just so we can so we can take those broad themes but also apply it in a more specific way if needed um, so I'll uh, dr. Um, dr. Clinton um, uh, thank you uh, I would um, I would defer that question over to um, uh, both uh, Director Figueredo as well as the uh, consulting company. It's not something that we have uh, uh, that the panel has discussed directly yet. Well, thank you, Alex. Through the chair, in working with Kojo Institute, we have a, a contract that we put in place. So there is some level of, sh of data sharing, but uh, we need to make sure that um, if people have come forward that no one can be identified. There's also a data sharing agreement with Dr. Tracy Valancourt in our research department around the survey portion that will go out to one for parents, one for staff, and one for students. So we do have a, a data sharing agreement with that piece as well. Thank you. Uh, that concluded my questions. Um, with that, um, uh, so I guess uh, let me just go back up to we've already passed uh, the motion attached to number eight. So I'm just going to get clarification from um, uh, Trustee Officer Miller. Um, uh, so we don't need to have a vote on this because we've already done the action. So with that, um, uh, we are going to um, move on to item 10. Uh, so I, I guess we'll, I'll just conclude quickly by thanking our panelists. Um, and sorry. Um, so I'll just conclude by saying uh, thank you to all of our panelists and uh, for all of your hard work. We very much appreciate all that you have been doing. And, uh, and we look forward to hearing from you again uh, when we receive the final report. And you're welcome to stay on or you're welcome to leave. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Showing with that, we're going to take a moment left. for them to ask it. Kika. Left. Leslie? Left. Left. Gary Warner. Left. Okay, so we'll move on now um, because we have um, we have uh, put a pause on item nine as we need to recess that and come back into it at the end of the meeting. Uh, so with that, we'll move on to oral reports. So item A, student trustee report, and I will turn to student trustee Medi. Okay, um, through the chair, um, for student senate, we'll be holding our final meeting of the year through Microsoft Teams on June the 10th. And senators are continuing to share their feedback on distance learning with student trustee Prozik and I. And they're just beginning to promote and spread the word on um, the recently released distance learning thought exchange um, created by our research and analytics department. And we're also in the process of getting all three of our incoming student trustees connected with the two of us, as well as with one another in order to introduce them to the role, as well as their roles in Student Senate. And I'll let student trustee Prozik cover any OSTA updates. 
Yeah, um, and before I get into the OSS updates, I just want to give a huge shout out to the senators that have been um, coming to each of our meetings, the online meetings. Um, it's not super easy to sit behind a screen for um, our two-hour meetings, and they do go pretty extensively because um, once they get the ball rolling, we really can't stop it, and it's incredible hearing the feedback they have. So I just want to give a, a huge shout-out to our senators um, all throughout this entire year. They've been amazing, another incredible group. And once again, if trustees or anyone in, in the um, hypothetical room hasn't had a chance to uh, join us for one of our Senate meetings, I highly recommend coming out. Um, you're all invited to any Senate meeting. Just reach out to Honer or myself. We'll send out another email through uh, Trustee Officer Miller. Um, but please, um, you know, join us for a Senate meeting and really see what the feedback they have to give and how substantive it is. Um, we've generated a lot of um, a lot of feedback, and we generated a few word clouds and um, gathered feedback in multiple ways. So we're excited to share that with um, Exec Council um, and trustees as well. So um, hopefully we'll see that in the near future. Um, but on the OSA side, I just want to announce that um, we're really excited uh, to close our project equity survey. Um, our equity survey was open um, from, I believe it was um, around um, mid-February we opened the survey. Um, so it's been open for a little bit now. We were able to gather 3,324 student responses, which is incredible. Those are responses from all across Ontario. Um, and we're really excited to see kind of what comes from that. Um, we have some really flexible data coming out of this survey, and so we're excited to, you know, really be able to compare and go deep to analyze what we get out of the survey. So um, the equity and education report will probably come out around, um, around next year. Um, we'll be transitioning it off to the next executive council, so stay tuned for that. Um, but other than that, I mean, we just wrapped up our um, online annual general meeting, or our EGM as we call it. Um, which was an incredible experience. Um, we were able to get a lot of engagement. Um, over 70 student trustees joined us for webinars um, and virtual professional development. We also scheduled various Zoom calls and uh, Microsoft Teams meetings for um, them to join us. And um, we get, really got to socialize and meet incoming student trustees. And, you know, as much as a, an in-person conference would have been great, um, this really was the next best, best thing. And I'm really happy that we got so much engagement. And then... Um, Lastly, I just want to give a little bit of a shout-out uh, shout to um, the Office Communications team, excluding myself. Um, recently, they pulled off an amazing initiative. Um, so basically, once the minister announced that uh, student, uh, the, school, uh, the schools will be closed for the next rest of the school year, um, the communications team got a flood, of, um, a flood of comments and DMs asking about a Minecraft graduation. Um, and so what we were actually able to pull off was um, our IT team was actually able to set up a communal Ontario education Minecraft server um, to post to all of our student followers on Instagram, um, which got a lot of engagement, upwards of 70 students, um, probably more 70 students at the time were able to join the server. Um, we witnessed the community forum, which was absolutely incredible. Um, Offstay has a blog post about it if you want to read more, but it really was an incredible experience as well. So, you know, we've had a lot of um, success in getting creative with engaging students from a distance. So. That's all I really want to share for the off end. Thank you. Um, so I'll go through the trustee roll call. Uh, trustee Archer, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Trustee Bingham. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Everything's been great. Um, Trustee Buck. No, I just would say uh, thank you to student trustees Nettie and Prozic for um, bringing the, those reports forward to us. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Danko. Just a thank you for uh, connecting our new incoming trustees to one another and, and helping them learn the ropes. I'm, I'm happy to hear that that's happening. Thanks. Um, Trustee Dees. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I guess it, it, I realize that um, our board, our student trustees coming in, what a what a scenario to come into. So, uh, just wondering how they're feeling about it. 
Yeah, so I'll start, and Cam might be able to add to this, but um, it's been a little bit difficult, probably more difficult than last year, um, to get all of the incomings connected with one another and with us. Um, but, yeah, it took it took a bit to kind of kickstart it, but things are going well. They're starting to connect with one another and make plans for student senate next year, so hopefully that will be able to continue. Well, thank you both to your leadership in this and to bringing our onboarding, I guess, like, you know, new student trustees in, in the midst of this and for continuing the work with student trustees or with, uh, sorry, student senate. And, um, yeah, let us know when that the, the date is for the next one, and uh, I'd love to join you. Thanks. Sorry, Trustee Galindo. Thank you. I think uh, my colleagues shared a lot of the, uh, the same sentiments. Uh, thank you for your leadership to you both and, and uh, for helping with the transition for the incoming student trustees. Uh, it's nice to know that we're going from two to three student trustees in the next school year, uh, which will uh, amplify student voice around the table. Uh, and despite the challenging circumstances of the transition, I continue to be very appreciative of the work that you both are doing and those leadership um, uh, capabilities. So thank you so much. Trustee Miller. Trustee Hi, Miller, no questions. questions. Okay, thank yes. you. Uh, Trustee Mulholland? No comments, thank you. Trustee Pagan Miller? Uh, no comments, thank you. Trustee Tutt? No question, thank you. Carol Pagan Miller? Left. Okay, and I do not have any uh, questions either, but thank you very much for your, um, uh, for your report. With that, I am going to move along now to uh, item uh, 10B, the director's report. So uh, thank you through the chair. Um, I'll be uh, as quick as I can. Um, I just want to begin by thanking everyone as the last, since my last um, director's verbal update, it has been an, an intense month um, to, to say the least. And I'm proud of how everyone has stepped up, how staff across all our service departments and schools, we know it's not perfect. There's a lot of work to do, um, but in a very short time, the ramp that was built, um, and there's some good learnings that will come from this. So, uh, as we're heading into the, you know, spring, our, our focus continues to be on all the things that we plan for in the fall in terms of staffing, promotion process, um, you know, I, IPRCs, um, our budget has been identified. All of these things are still happening uh, through virtual ways as we as we look at. Uh, what September startup will look like. And um, again, the, the equity work is still continuing around equity of access to technology, food security, and um, working with some of some, our community partners of how we can try to support our students, um, especially in specific populations that, that are experiencing um, new challenges. Um, what I did want to focus on is our, we'll get more information in the information session tomorrow night, but we'll start to see that we're starting to focus our energies on what summer learning program will look like as we'll wait for the ministry to provide updates on the funding in terms of the regular programs we provide and um, what new funding sources will come and, and Peter will provide an update at the information session tomorrow. But our, our staff is working hard on, on shifting energy to, to, be, to be ready for the summer and to look at all options. And secondly, I wanted to highlight tonight, uh, the most important thing is sort of the thought exchange. Trustees did receive the information uh, from Heather Miller um, in terms of our results from our, our parent guardians, over, over 4,000 people responded. And the parent guardian results really highlight, um, I think, important learnings for us to, to respond to. I do want to say there was some successes that were highlighted by parents really thanking for the flexibility, thanking uh, staff for understanding that there's um, that each family situation is, is different and, and, to try to, and for their flexibility to try to manage those family situations and also around teachers connecting um, personal communications that have been going out to students and families and the types of different feedbacks that teachers are trying to provide for their students. But in addition, there really three buckets, although there was 10 themes, identify those themes in three big buckets. Um, parents were clear that, you know, they want more interaction. What does that interaction look like in terms of direct teaching 
we've heard the province talked about synchronous learning, but um, that direct teaching is something that parents are going to be in this mode. In this mode. We, we, we need more of it. We need, we need help, especially parents who, who are still trying to work or manage multiple children at home or work out of home. We also heard parents saying, you know, more consistency uh, is possible in a type of stru a structure so we can plan in terms of what the day may look like. And uh, another bucket, which I think is an important one that will connect to the staff piece, is around standardizing virtual platforms. Um, the parents uh, have said that that's an important piece. And what came loud and clear is that when educators had already adopted, adopted a virtual tool, especially our standard one, it was more seamless when we had to have this emergency closure. But when uh, an educator might not have a, uh, adopted a virtual tool or a standard, a lot of time was spent on technical pieces versus focusing on curriculum outcomes. So standardizing the platform, and that was even louder in our elementary parents, um, more so than our, than our secondary panel. And again, the last theme was around uncertainty and, and parents wanting to know more about what reopening of schools will look like. And again, as we are planning behind the scenes, as we're waiting for the minister's plan for June, uh, we continue to work with our public health and thinking of different options as we, um, so when the plan comes, we've done some proactive work um, so that was clear in the parent surveys. In the thought exchange from the, from the staff, we see again some successes, uh, a real appreciation for how service departments have supported um, our educators in schools, from facilities to HR uh, to IT to business services, uh, quite a, uh, an appreciation how responsive service departments were, and also how responsive our school leaders were to trying to support our, our teachers in a, in a quick two-week turnaround to, to, to get up and get their virtual classrooms up and running. Um, but they also did express some, some challenges around, you know, expectations being clear that, you know, that um, it seemed to change on a week-to-week -week basis. And, there's some, and there is some truth to that because as, as expectations from the ministry changed, it changed from us. Um, they also talked about more professional learning around um, not only digital platforms, and we, we provided a range of that, and we've seen a huge uptake. Um, but to then look at some effective pedagogical practice on those platforms and what does assessment and evaluation look like on these platforms. Uh, and there was also some uncertainty around synchronous learning using video conferencing, and, and we need to respond to that, and, and we know that uh, that's an important piece of, of direct teaching, and we need, we need both. Um, but we know the importance of having a standardized tool so we can deal and address any of those of the uh, security and privacy issues, um, and more will be coming to trustees at program committee um, this June. And there was also another big theme of, like, just like parents, of what it's like to reopen schools. What does it look like? People are asking a lot of questions. Um, so we know that the, when we move into June, especially in July, we'll need to en engage our staff once we get the guidelines from the ministry. That'll be an important piece uh, in terms of staff engagement. And there's next steps to, to all these reports. Um, so again, remember the thought exchange is getting some feedback, broad pieces. Right now, Research Analytics is, is doing deeper analysis of the thought exchanges. And as Sally said last time, that, that she's pulling out reports that could serve each service department. So if themes have emerged around equity, if themes have emerged around assessment evaluation, if themes have emerged around specialized uh, programming for students with special needs. They're creating those reports specific to departments. And then we're also looking at um, our next, what phase two would look like. So if, if we're going to go back out and ask questions, the questions will be more specific based on their analysis of this. We'll, we'll probably want to learn, learn about certain areas that the, the staff have highlighted and parents have highlighted, but we need to respond to some of these too. So our next will be communication of how are we responding to some of these things. So staff knows our actions we're taking, and, and also parents and parents know we've heard them, and we're going to be responding uh, to, to, uh, to their, their concerns. So that's sort of my high-level update of the thought exchange, and we do envision uh, sort of a phase two feedback um, probably at the end of June, maybe early July, but um, after we do further analysis of what's been provided uh, to date. So that's my director's verbal report, and I hope um, trustees get a chance to look at uh, the reports, again, that have been shared through Heather Miller last week, as they are on our website, and I thank, again, Research Analytics 
um, and our communication department for helping facilitate that important feedback. Back to the chair. Thank you, Director Figueredo, for uh, your full report, but specifically the details around thought exchange. Um, it, it was huge success. We had over 4,000 and I think three participants. And uh, uh, I forget what the full number was, but um, and a huge number of, of replies of people um, providing multiple responses uh, once they got involved in the discussion. And uh, it really, I believe, demonstrates how we as an organization are seeking to be nimble in a time of uh, significant organizational change, to be responsive, be responsive to the constituents that uh, that we serve, and to um, uh, and certainly to the. Uh, I think we've also inspired other parts of the province as I'm, I am hearing that other school boards are also looking to do the same. So with that, um, I will be going through roll call and I'll start with Trustee Archer. No questions, thank you. Trustee Buck. No questions, thank you. Trustee Dango. Thank you, um, and thank you to the director for the, the summary of the thought exchange. I, I think it's really exciting the, the way the themes emerged, and as a parent and a trustee, I could have written down any of those themes and said that was my experience as well. Um, the question I have has to do with the, um, the comment about as we head into June and July, you'll need to engage staff once you get guidelines from the ministry. And as Trustee Johnstone mentioned, we're seeking to be nimble and responsive. So my, my question is how might we start preparing for fall and the possibility of being online or partly online or even starting face-to-face -face and having to transition to online in the fall? Um, have we started talking about that? Because I'm seeing summer vacations coming up very soon and I think our window is getting smaller. So, uh, thank, oh, so through the chair, thank you. Um, to Trustee Don Danko's question, we have already uh, begun a conversation with all our school leaders and department leaders about um, that, that what's come back is standardizing a tool and that um, message has been um, been delivered by me in terms of what we will, will you know, expect for September as we standardize the virtual tools. And also we're looking at some of the programs for the summer. Um, Peter will speak to them a bit more um, tomorrow in more detail, but the planning we're doing is to, again, promote the virtual tools we have in a blended approach um, in terms of will some of these be available to be done uh, in a blended meaning face-to-face -face and some virtual, or will they all be virtual? Uh, we'll be getting a little bit more direction from the ministry around that because it might vary by jurisdiction. Um, and then we are doing ongoing training still as we speak now around those vir virtual tools. Uh, my comment more about the June was around a, potentially a second thought exchange connected to some of the other work around professional learning, around practices, around um, uh, assessments and, e and evaluations, also engaging staff once we get more guidelines of the physical aspect of what school startup will look like. But what one thing we have done as a result of this is the teacher networks that have been um, engaged. So we have networks of, of teachers by grade across the district that are signing up really um, by the hundreds and thousands in, in, across our district on Microsoft Teams. Um, so I'll give examples of a uh, system-wide grade one network of, of educators that are sharing best practices on our, on our digital platforms. Not, not only the, not just the technical piece, but around effective practice and effective assessment. Also, we have networks of our secondary department heads using Microsoft Teams and the Hub to try to uh, also have the same conversation. So we're leveraging those right now because we want to take advantage of that, oppor that opportunity. Um, but we know we're going to need to continue to engage staff uh, once we have a, more of a solid plan of what the, the physical and digital world uh, will look like, the blended approach uh, coming September. I, I hope that answers the question. Trustee Danko? Thank you. It mostly does, and I appreciate that uh, a lot of sharing and collaboration is happening around best practices. Um, I guess part of my question is, 
are we looking to also be efficient? And so we have teachers teaching grade eight or grade seven or grade six across our board in many different classrooms, and they've all had to come up with a way to do this online virtually, which means they've all had to source out online resources or they've had to put together lesson plans that would be different from their day-to-day face-to-face lesson plans. Have we considered getting teams together to develop modules for each piece or each component of the curriculum that's just ready to go online and a teacher can adapt it as needed? And I'll, I'll turn to Director Figueredo because we do have this, um, a staff, the staff exchange as well. Yeah, so through, through uh, tr Trustee Danko, that's um, what you raise is, the, the, is find the right balance in terms of um, um, schools um, developing resources that meet the, the needs of their children because they know their students best versus our specialized services program, division equity, developing um, digital resources at, at, from the center and our consulting those. We're, we're developing them each week. Some of these resources are being developed but they're also being developed with the collaboration of our, our educators to give us some insights. So it's um, uh, what we want to try to avoid, what we heard from the parents on this, is that if we create the central resources, that sometimes the central resources are just being provided um, for, for people to share that, that may not be connected to um, what's relevant to, to those learners at that time. So we have a balance of both, and we know we need to continue to do um, more of that as, as we move forward, especially in the digital world. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, so does that, does that conclude everything for you, Trustee Danko? Did that capture the question that you're asking? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, moving along Left. to Trustee Deef. Uh No, no questions. Thank you. Trustee Galindo? No questions. I think my colleagues have been asking good questions, and I think we're certainly seeing the value of data collection during this time. So thank you to the chair and to the director. Uh, trustee, um, I didn't have anything. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> this is our staff team. Uh, to uh, Trustee Miller. No questions. Thank you. Uh, trustee Maholland. No questions. Trustee Pagan Miller. Oh, uh, sorry, and I did receive um, a message, a text message from uh, Trustee Pagan Miller, and she had to send regrets for the remainder of the meeting. Uh, Trustee Tut. Uh, Trustee Tut, are you still with us? No questions. Thank you. Trustee, student trustee Medi? No questions, thank you. Student trustee Prozac? Uh, student trustee Prozac, are you with us? And uh, trustee Bingham? No questions at this time, thank you. Thank you. And I did find the number. Uh, we had 6,425 thoughts from parents shared. And um, uh, so it's uh, been quite the, I guess, the progress made. I do have one question. Cameron Post uh, joined. Uh, and just before I go into my own question, um, Student Trustee Prozic, do you have any questions? Uh, With regard no, to, thank you. The director's update, correct? Yes. No, thanks. I'm good, thanks. Thank you. Uh, so I have one question to Director Figueroa because we had such a uh, phenomenal response. Uh, will we be providing further communications to the public on how we are responding to the questions, or I guess to the feedback that they gave us? Uh, through the chair, yes, we will be. Uh, re Sally's team right now is analyzing the, the, the parent piece and then coming back to uh, Exec Council and then uh, in terms of how we'll be responding in the sequence, in terms of we'll be responding. And one is evident right now, which is, is standing above all of them, is around standardizing our digital uh, platform is, is very clear in terms of what parents have, have asked for. 
So we will be responding once analysis is done. So further communication needs, needs to occur between now and the end of June. Wonderful, because it's so important when we get that feedback that we do, we do show a response. So I'm very happy to hear that. Um, so with that, I'll now turn to the almost final item on the agenda, which is the chair's report. Um, I'll keep this very brief. Um, so I, I want to recognize the important work that our Board of Trustees have been doing. Um, they have been uh, raising and forwarding the concerns that um, parents, students, uh, staff, community have been raising at this time. But more importantly, um, or equally as important, is to also work with our communities, uh, to work with our parents to provide them support to ensure that they're um, being connected to um, the correct individuals, whether that is their principal or to a superintendent, um, helping them to, to resolve concerns and ensure that their voices continue to be heard, such as through our, our parent thought exchange, um, our staff thought exchange, and also through our upcoming student thought exchange. So I, I really appreciate um, and want to recognize the important work that trustees are doing. Uh, we also have a number of trustees that have been very involved with um, um, uh, providing uh, food and donations and helping to coordinate that for their local communities. Uh, certainly there's been trustees involved, uh, multiple trustees involved with uh, Mountain Kids Club. As well, uh, I am aware of one trustee who has been sewing face masks in exchange for uh, donations to be made to the food bank at Welcome Inn. So all, all of this work is uh, hugely important. Um, I will update the board that I did have a conference call uh, with the director on um, Friday uh, with uh, Minister Lecce. Uh, so all full board chairs, all 72 chairs and directors across the province participated in this phone call uh, Friday afternoon. And um, during that phone call, I did have the opportunity to be second on the speaker's list. I did raise a concern, uh, two concerns. One, that right. um, boards Matt. are often the last to know about, um, about updates to the public, that media was often being informed or always being informed ahead of time before school boards were and receiving full, full uh, press statements before um, school boards were. Um, which uh, certainly put us at a disadvantage when we were trying to understand uh, what the implications were to our school system and then to communicate out. So I did raise that concern. And also I raised the concern around uh, the need for greater consultation with trustees and with uh, boards, uh, with school boards, when it came to um, all of the planning um uh, not only for the remainder of this school year, but also for the reopening in September. And um, I, myself, I raised that, but also multiple other chairs across the province raised that exact same concern. As a result, we actually received a email which afforded to trustees on Friday, late Friday evening, where the minister committed to weekly phone calls with uh, school board chairs and directors. So we, we really appreciate the step. We do see that as a step in the right direction uh, in order to foster um, better engagement with our school boards and to really promote a collaborative uh, working relationship with all of us. And um, so I certainly, as, as, um, uh, as these conference calls with the minister uh, begin to be established, uh, right now we don't have the time for this week, but as soon as it becomes available, I will continue to reach out to staff and our director uh, in order to coordinate uh, what questions and messages we need the, the minister to hear at this time and uh, to be asked at this time so that our communities continue to be represented directly uh, straight up, not only to the school board, but up to the province. So with that, that uh, does conclude uh, my report at this time. I will uh, just generally ask uh, if we have any, if there's any questions for the chair's report. I won't go all the way through roll call. So is there any questions? 
Hearing none, uh, we do have a motion from Trustee Maholland, um, and I'll have that seconded by uh, Vice Chair Danko to move back in uh, camera as we had uh, tabled the earlier, or we had recessed um, earlier item uh, nine, Committee of the Whole. And so if trustees stay on, on the line, uh, then... Um, uh, uh, um, Heather Miller will be able to uh, disconnect from the live feed. So I just ask that you kindly hold on the line. And sorry, I'm understanding that Trustee Mahalan has left the meeting, so I will...